Welcome to the MLB Game of the Week pregame show. We are getting you ready for Blue Jays at Royals. A sticky day in Kansas City. Pretty typical of the summertime. KC needs to wake up their bats if they want to avoid a sweep at home. Meanwhile, Toronto has won 11 of their last 13 games. Hey, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'm Sierra Santos. She is Jamie Hirsch. This is the finale of a three game set and Jay's pitching has been unscathed in KC. We're going to chat with one of the members of that staff coming up. We're going to ask him about his favorite YouTube video, which by the way, it involves a dog. Yeah, so who doesn't like dogs? Stay tuned. You're going to want to see this video. It's awesome. All right, Toronto though, shut out the Royals. Eight nothing on Monday. Seven zip yesterday. They're looking to pitch their way to their third consecutive shutout for just the second time in franchise history. And it's been a minute since that happened. The last time was all the way back in 1983. Here's a fun fact for you. None, not one of the current Jays on the roster was even born then. So they're looking to make some history. And the Royals, meanwhile, are trying to avoid making the wrong kind of history. Because yeah. it's been a tough go for KC. They've got the worst record in the majors. They're on pace for a franchise record 111 losses. But Maybe today is the day they turn things around, Sierra. We can only hope for Royals. I, I've got a good feeling about it. Okay. I, I told you this earlier. I got you a did, good feeling. You did about say it. that. All right. Some things you need to know about MLB's Game of the Week live on YouTube. Our game is streaming live all over the globe. The best part is, it's free. After today, we're going to have nine more games during the regular season. So be sure to subscribe to the MLB YouTube channel to join the over three and a half million fans that enjoy our MLB content. Click the bell icon to receive notifications on upcoming games. And YouTube TV subscribers can stream live in an MLB pop-up channel as well as in 4K for 4K Plus subscribers. But for now, let's take a look at last night's matchup between the Blue Jays and Royals. So now Matt Chapman with runners at second and third. See, the infield is kind of halfway for the Royals right now. It's not going to matter. Smoked into left, a base hit. Kirk comes in to score. Espinal getting the wave. He'll come in to score, and it is two to nothing, Blue Jays. Colin Snyder comes in to pitch for the 26th time this year, and the pitch to Tapia is lined to left center field, and this ball is going to split the outfielders and get to the fence. Espinal hits third. He's getting the wave home. And there will be no throw. An RBI double for Tapia makes it a three to nothing game. Here it comes. And it's ball four to force in a run. The third consecutive walk issued by Kansas City pitchers to the backstop. Zimmer coming home and he'll score. Well hit ball to deep right. And it's going to be over the head of Merrifield and up against the fence. It's a two run double for Teoscar Hernandez to extend the lead to seven to nothing. Now, Sierra, you mentioned it. The Jays have been one of the hottest teams mm -hmm. in baseball, going 11 and 2 in their last 13. So here's the lineup they're sending out today with Mr. Leadoff George Springer. He's fourth all time with 50 leadoff homers in his career. Zach Collins, by the way, was actually called up yesterday to replace Danny Jansen, who's out with a broken hand. Collins will be behind home plate and batting eighth. But these bats are hot right now. The Jays are averaging more than seven runs per game over their last 13, Sierra. Yeah, Boba Shett reached base five times. Times last night he walked in three of those I'm not complaining he's on my fantasy team Blue Jays they're third in the AL in batting average slugging percentage and on base percentage so not a bad mix to be in all right Whit Merrifield leading off and playing right for the Royals playing in his 525th consecutive game that's the longest active street in all of baseball Andrew Benintendi batting second. He's eighth in the American League in batting average. Bobby Witt Jr., the rookie, he's been getting hot. His last 24 games, 15 extra base hits, 18 RBI, and an 826 OPS. Now, Salvador Perez, he's DHing today. He has a 236 on base percentage, which is the lowest among qualified hitters. When you look at Salvi and Vladdy, who were tied in la last year in home runs, yeah. you kind of wonder if there's something going on. I know he had the thumb sprain, but. Ugh. Well, I was reading that he actually just recently reached out to his old hitting coach, Terry Bradshaw, really? for some advice, and he just said, believe in yourself, trust your hands. Ended up helping him spark a little bit of offense over the weekend, but, I mean, obviously getting shut out in back-to-back -back games, uh, the bats have been very quiet for KC, so we'll see. He also has one of the highest chase rates in all of baseball, mm. second only to Javier Baez. All right, let's kick it over to the guys in Kansas City. Scott Braun, Yonder Alonso, take it away. 
Do you know who I have with me here? It is the mayor, Yonder Alonzo, <laughs> right? Hey, I mean, we go park to park, and I mean this in the best way. I just tag along because the combos are off the charts before the game. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we kind of do do that. And uh, it's funny because I can talk in, in, in Spanish. I can talk mm -hmm. to the American guys. I can... You know, maybe a little Japanese. Why not? You know. Hey, he can do it all. You can do it all. I'm <laughs> sure you could pick up the language pretty easily because yeah. also you've known some of the players that we come across for a long time. Yeah. Like Bo Bichette. We go right. up to him and what did you say? Oh, man. He actually told me. He's like, remember, remember when we were 12 years old? And, and I was hitting, and you said to me, hey, keep that swing. That swing's going to play. But even then, Guriel Jr., Tapia, uh, Chapman, he came up as a rookie, so I've known him for a long time. I mean, there's just so many guys. Bobby Witt, futures game guy. Mm -hmm. There's so many guys that we're so excited about, especially a team like Toronto, who's playing very, very good baseball. Yeah, I was going to say, all of the guys you mentioned we'll see today, obviously, as we're calling this game. I mean, we had so much fun this morning, then I get back up to the press box, and I'm like, wait, we have a game to call, too. That's right. It felt like we had a party, but as far as what we're seeing on the <laughs> field right now, it's been a party for the Blue Jays. They've won 11 of 13. They're one of the forces, especially on offense for years, I think, but now, pitching-wise, yeah, they're, they're very pitching. impressive. You know, they're pitching well, but I think also with me is the one-run games. And, and the reason you do that is not only by pitching and defense, but having your glue guys, right? I think Kirk should be an all-star behind the plate this year for the American League. Tapia has done it. Phenomenal job. Love that trade. And, of course, what can you say about Matt Chapman, right? Montoya, the manager, said he's already one of my favorite ones. Past 12 games, he's been absolutely crushing it. It's, I'm just happy to see them all being healthy and performing at a high level. Yeah, they're dancing. They're ready to go in this one as the Blue Jays are thinking sweep. We're going to talk to Alec Manoa, who's a Cy Young candidate at the moment. We will have fun and barbecue. Oh, yeah. Teaser. See you soon. Best hair out of any booth in baseball. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the pitching matchup. Yusei Kaguchi took a loss to the Twins last Friday, but before, before that, he was 2 0 with a 236 ERA in his previous five starts. Brady Singer has a 415 ERA, also looking for a bounce back after giving up seven runs, three homers in his last outing against the Astros. Time for a poll question. Which star player will have the most total bases in this game? Hmm. Vlad Jr., Sal Perez, George Springer, or Bobby Witt Jr.? Go ahead and submit your vote, and we'll share results later in the show. Ballpark Cam taking us inside the K. You see Bo Bichette getting ready to go. Jay's closer, by the way, Jordan Romano, is going to join us in a moment with yes. more on what's been working so well for his hometown team. And also, which of his favorite cologne he brought <laughs> today? He goes this. Deep I need into to know. Details, so I want. I need to know. Stick around. Hey, baseball fans! Live Major League Baseball games are back on YouTube you'll be able to watch select live games throughout the regular season on YouTube free of charge. No fees or sign up required. Here's how to find and watch the live games from your smart TV, computer, and phone. To watch from your smart TV, launch the YouTube app and search for MLB. Select the MLB channel and click the live game. To watch from your computer, Go to YouTube.com and search for MLB. This will take you to the MLB YouTube channel, where the featured game will be playing live. To watch from a phone, open the YouTube app and search for MLB. Select the MLB channel and the live game will be the first video you'll see. These games will only be available on YouTube, so make sure you don't miss out. If you are logged into your YouTube account, set a reminder by selecting the game on the MLB YouTube channel and pressing Set Reminder. You'll receive a notification when the live game starts. Watch MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube at youtube.com slash MLB. Bro, I'm going to need you to save me one of those. Mm. We're getting you all warmed up for the MLB Game of the Week. This is the pregame show. Welcome on back.
We are stoked to have this next guest on the show, Jordan Romano. You already set a new Blue Jays record by converting 31 consecutive save opportunities, but you came into last night's game, non-save situation, pitch a scoreless ninth. You guys have pitched back-to-back -back shutouts for the first time since last July. How much do you guys feed off of each other and want to keep it going? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, when the when the offense is rolling how it is, you know, step up and do our part too. So I think the past two games, you kind of seen that, you know, the boys been hitting and uh, the pitchers really wanted to throw up zeros too. You guys have had such lopsided wins lately that you actually haven't pitched all that much. So I know last night was the first time you had pitched in a week. So what is that like for you to go so long between appearances and how do you stay sharp? Yeah, so when you go that long, it's you're always thinking like, you know, do I still have it? You know, it's been a week, you know, <laughs> do I still got it? But uh, no, it was, uh, you know, it, it's always nice to get a little break, um, you know, during the season. Uh, being kind of a leverage guy in the bullpen, you never know like how much you're going to pitch. You could be pitching a lot, you could be pitching not a lot. So I kind of use this time to kind of work over my delivery a little bit and uh, fine tune some things. But uh, yeah, yesterday I uh, felt great. You know, we got a W, so it's all good. All right, we're going non-baseball. Is that cool with you? Yeah, that's fine with me. All right, we did a deep dive, like serious journalistic investigation. <laughs> you rotate between three different colognes based on how you're feeling and playing. Which colognes are they and yeah. which mood is each one dedicated to? Yeah, so, um, you know, I got the creed. Uh, really it's like an expensive expensive cologne and uh i kind of use that when uh you know the boys just uh we're feeling good we're rolling you know spray some of that on everyone's feeling good uh so that's the creed is kind of when we're rolling and then i have a cologne it's called the bullet and that's uh it's when you're feeling dangerous you know you gotta go out there you gotta do something you gotta prove something so that's the bullet and uh and then there's another one, it's the, it's the Joe Malone. It's kind of like the uh, in-between. You know, you're not feeling dangerous, you're not rolling, you're just kind of here, you're present. So that's when the Joe Malone comes in. So those are the three moods, I guess. Okay, one question, which creed? Because I do know that cologne is expensive. I have bought it before. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the all gold bottle. So it's like the really like bougie one. Buy it. Whoa. Buy it. Okay, and do you, do you allow your teammates to share? Oh, yeah, so I, I would give it to the whole team, but it's mostly bullpen guys. You know, I'll ask the guys if they need a spray, like, how you feeling? Do you need the bullet, bullet today? Oh my you know, gosh. so it's mostly the bullpen guys, but I'm open to share with everyone. Is it Creed today? You guys are rolling. What's the one today? Oh, yeah, it's Creed. Okay. Creed okay. for everyone today. I appreciate that. And I like that you have three different on rotation. I only wear one perfume mm -hmm. since I was 13 years old, and I have ruined it for every ex-boyfriend that I have ever dated. <laughs> mm. Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. Can't get it out. Yeah, can't get it out of your mind. Consistent, though. You. Yeah. Um, okay, so, Jordan, you grew up just outside of Toronto. Now you play for your hometown team. What does that mean to you to every day put on those Jays threads? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful for it. I uh, grew up, you know, me and the family, huge Blue Jays fan. So, you know, I watched a lot of games growing up, too, just at the Rogers Center. And now kind of being able to play there, uh, yeah, it's special. You know, my parents come to almost every game. Uh, brothers, brothers and sisters come out. So, yeah, it's a pretty special feeling. And because you are a Canadian, I have to ask, are you a hockey fan as well? Did you grow up playing hockey? I work in hockey as yeah. well, so that's why I'm well, asking. She's our, I'm she's our hockey, hockey girl. Fan. Locked in. <laughs> yeah, big time uh, hockey fan, big, uh, big fan of the Leafs. Um, yeah, I grew up playing. I stopped when I was 17. It was kind of like baseball or hockey. And I was always just a little bit better at baseball, so I decided to go with baseball. Were you center? What was your position? Uh, when I played like high level, I was um, I was defense because I was okay. a little slow, and then I dropped down to a lower level, and then I I was center then. Okay. All right, this is YouTube, so we have to ask you about your favorite YouTube video. Let's go ahead and roll it. Stop. Okay. Oh. 
He's not done. No, he's not. <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> okay, so tell us why this ranks at the top for you. We're dog gals. We're assuming that you're a dog guy. We also got to know, do you got pups at home? Yeah, I do actually. I have a, a Doberman named Otto. You know, really love dogs. I uh, love dogs all my life. And I watch a lot of YouTube, but when I when I found that video, it made me laugh. So I watched it, uh, watch it every now and then. It gives, always gives me a good laugh. Well, thank you so much for the time. And uh, good luck today and going forward. I know you're in the conversation for possible all-star yeah. appearance. So uh, great work so far. And thanks again for the time here today. All right. Thanks for having me on. It's time now for our creator spotlight, and if you're a sneakerhead, you may want to pay attention. We've got Foot Doctor Zach in the house. His channel does reviews on sneakers from the unique perspective of a foot doctor. His favorite squad is the Pirates, and his favorite memory is that wild 2013 NL wildcard game between the Reds and the Buckos. So let's welcome in the man himself, Foot Doctor Zach, Zach Thomas. Zach, we are getting set for the Blue Jays and Royals here on YouTube. Just a ton of great young talent on the field in this matchup. So who's a player in this game that you would pay the most money to watch play? I'd say probably Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I think with each game, especially in the early summer, he's kind of getting stronger and stronger. So it could be interesting come midsummer if he stays injury free. The Blue Jays are one of four AL East teams currently sitting in a playoff spot. We know it's early, okay? But how many teams do you think the AL East gets in? I think the safe answer is three. But I think if the Red Sox can get and kind of keep momentum, I think then it's pretty easy to say you could get a stacked, you know, AL East in the playoffs. But right now, I'd say hedge my bet with three. That's probably the safe bet. But can you imagine four in the post? Mm -hmm. I mean, that would just be madness, and we are here for it. Okay, we mentioned you're a Pirates guy. Your favorite memory is that 2013 NL Wild Card game between the Reds and Pirates. So what's the mm -hmm. best memory that you have of that game? I just remember I was up in the in the high bleachers uh, for that one. I was up in the in the nosebleeds, and when Johnny Cueto dropped the ball after we kept chanting his name, the stadium got so loud I could actually feel the concrete <laughs> vibrating underneath of you. It was like one of those moments like you really felt like you actually did something for the team, like you were actually part of the win. Uh, so that was uh, incredible. Okay, so your channel is called Foot Doctor Zach, but. You don't necessarily give medical advice on it, even though I asked you for some free medical advice before we started this interview. You give sneaker reviews. How did you come up with the idea for this channel? Because it is a really cool concept. Uh, well, being a foot doctor, sometimes you know your day isn't uh, as exciting as you'd want it to be. And I got into this, you know, for, you know, for, you know to because I was really into sneaker technology uh, back in high school and college uh, when I was playing tennis, actually. And uh, I kind of found I was arguing with a patient one time because they were having pain and they wouldn't stop wearing a certain shoe. So I finally bought it and cut it open to show them what, what was going on. And I said, oh, I should just throw this up on, uh, I should throw this up on YouTube. And it took off from there. And it's just a really fun way to kind of be creative with my job. How much does the kind of shoes affect your overall well-being, your back, your legs? How much do you see a, a result from that as far as what kind of shoes you're wearing? Yeah, I mean, not every shoe is good for every body, for, you know, for sure. Uh, some people love a hard foam type shoe. Some people like more of a soft foam type shoe. And it really depends on your foot, you know, and uh, that, that's why it, it's hard to give recommendations for individual people because one person might have a great experience in one shoe and the next person might hate it. Uh, and so that's, I mean, I, there's so many little intricacies in shoes. So yeah, for sure. And a lot of times it's just people wearing out their shoes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're just wearing them way past what they should be. And that's usually what's getting people into trouble, but a lot of it is, you know, wrong match for sure. So we know that you are, you have fantastic medical advice, but we're also here for your sneaker advice as yeah. well. And we're trying to impress we you here. Some. We're both rocking some new kicks that we're excited about. I don't know what you think of them. So I want to put you on the spot and ask for a couple sneaker reviews. Let's start right. with Sierra because uh, hers are so sweet. They're custom made. Tell us about them, Sierra, and then have Zach uh, give us his thoughts. Okay, so I ordered these on the Nike website and I got my name put on them. Apparently you can only get five letters. Thankfully, my <laughs> name has just five letters. So that's what I went with and I was like, oh, Oh man, these are gonna look so money, but I was looking for a fun shoe. Um, I don't really know what the little gold piece, I think it's a toothbrush, not really sure. What do you think about them? 
Yeah, I, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to, look, to get another look at that. It's a little medallion, Rack but I do back. love the, the customization. I mean, Air Force Ones are something like the, they're just timeless, right? They're, I think there's 2,000 different, over 2,000 different variations of the Air Force One. But usually it's the real simple design that, that usually becomes iconic. And I mean, look at the Air Force One. I mean, I wouldn't lace them up for the NBA finals. <laughs> but, I mean, but just look how iconic they are. And they just look great, black and white. I mean, it's awesome. Thank All you. right. Yeah, I love them. They're so so I, I get a so 10 good. out of 10. <laughs> yeah, she's kind. 11. Okay, now I'm nervous. Okay, mine, I just got for a birthday present. Be kind, because I love them. Uh, they're the Jordan 3 is the women's, think obviously. They're, so they're called Dark Mocha, a little leopard on there, I think, and like the baby pink. I don't know. Tell yeah, me that's what the you Neo think. Yeah, that's like the Neapolitan ice cream yes, colorway. Right yes, that's what I said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually have, I have, I have my pair right there. I so, thought yeah, no, so. I, mean, I love I love, I love the Jordan 3. I mean, I think the best thing about the Jordan 3 is the is the elephant print on them. But what I like, I think, is a sneakerhead. What I like is that that was the first iteration of Nike Air where you could actually see it. That was the first visible Air you could see in, in a Nike shoe. And now look all these years later, you know, it's just everywhere. I mean, Nike Air, like seeing a little air bubble in the shoe, it's as recognizable as a McDonald's arch. So you just saw what, you know, you can just see what that little design tweak does and then boom. Oh man! Well, hey, I give you, I give you a ten out of ten. <gasps> I give you a ten out of ten. Oh, Thank this you. is great. I feel like we're, we're being validated. cheated, though, Dr. Zach. We're not seeing your shoes. We are not seeing what you're wearing <laughs> He's right in now. flip flops. No. <laughs> here, here, I got these ones. I got, I got the Lebrons. They're cut in half. I can't really wear them. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the advice and thank you for giving us great reviews. Thank you so much for having me. Zach Grinky with. Uh, his tiniest teammate right there. He's on the IL with the right flexor strain. We are still getting you ready for Blue Jays at Royals coming up in just a bit. Welcome to this little interstate squabble, otherwise known as the 1985 World Series. John Tudor delivers and he swings and misses. Well, this is a Cy Young performance tonight for Saber Hagen. 2 2, got him. The Kansas City Royals rebound and beat the Cardinals. The Cardinals lead the World Series three games to one. Danny Jackson has just been brilliant. And Kansas City, here we come again. A little swimmer to the right side. Worrell races over to cover the throw. Doesn't get him. Looks like he's out. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Here's the center. Here's the throw. He scores. We go to a seven. To Motley for the title. The Kansas City Royals are the 1985 World Champions. Welcome back to the MLB game of the week pregame show. You say Kikuchi about to take the hill. He had allowed just four homers over his first nine starts up until his last outing. The Royals, on the other hand, have won just three games since May 18th. Kansas City sitting at the bottom of the league with a 17 and 37 record. But today they could turn it all around. Fans watching have their choice of listening experience. Moments before first pitch, simply click on the gear icon in your player, choose audio tracks, and select either the primary broadcast or the Royals radio call. Each is available on your favorite device once the game is underway. Let's dive into the numbers on this matchup using StatCast powered by Google Cloud. For that, we bring in our friend Sarah Langs from MLB.com. Sarah, we all know how potent the Jays lineup is. One thing you hear all the time is how good uh, hitters are and how patient they are at the plate, but that's not necessarily the case with one of Toronto's young sluggers. Tell us why. 
Absolutely. So Bo Bichette actually is the fourth highest first pitch swing rate in the majors this year. And usually when you hear that, you know, opposite of patience, you kind of wonder, okay, is there going to be success there? But if you take a look at what Bo Bichette has done when he puts the first pitch in play, he has been very, very successful. As you can see, he's hitting 325 with a 575 slugging percentage when he does put that first pitch into play so the aggressiveness is really working for him and it's really elevating his game this year this is the most he's ever swung at the first pitch but it's really working for him and just overall he's hitting the ball harder than he ever has before and after a little bit of a slow start he's really finding his groove all of his underlying stats say that he is going to continue having a really great season Okay, so be aggressive, find success. I like it. Yes. Sarah, last week we talked about Bobby Witt's elite speed. And lately the Royals phenom has been making some strides, though, at the plate. What are the numbers telling us? He has. So, again, that speed is the lead. We could talk about it forever. But I want Royals fans to know some other great stuff about Bobby Witt Jr. So, as we mentioned last week, a little bit of a slow start in April. But if you take a look at what he's done since, every number that really looks at the quality of the swings he's taking with that chase rate and the quality of contact he's making indicate that he's doing a lot better. So, you can see that expected slugging percentage way up expected batting average also up and his barrel rate so what are those telling us that's saying that he's making much better contact those are looking at the exit velocity and the launch angle of everything that he's doing so if you look here i mean even you can see a lot better just in terms of barreling up the ball which is something that i'm always looking for when you barrel up the ball it is usually an extra extra base hit and that's what Royals fans want to see and with that speed that we mentioned every double could end up a triple with a guy like this so he's really blooming into that dynamic player that made him a top prospect all the way up through the minors yeah when he turns on the wheels he does not slow down as always thanks so much for your time Sarah thank you so much for having me Time now for our picks to click. Let's make some predictions on our game coming up shortly at Kauffman Stadium. All right, Jamie, here we go. Jay's player to record most total bases. I am going to go with Boba Shett. Batting second, okay. uh, you know, I mean, he likes to rack up the bases, right? In fact, his last 13 games, he's hitting 333 with nine extra base hits. 11 runs scored. He's my pick to click. How about you? All right, I'm going with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, Vladdy, 11 hits in his last 13 games. Six of those were homers. He likes long ball. He also has better splits away from Rogers Center. That's weird. I, I, that actually surprised me. When I was looking into it, it surprised me. He is two, hitting 284 away from home. Yeah, and I think the reason that was maybe masked a little bit last year is because they weren't playing at Rogers Center, right? And now right. that they're back in Toronto, uh, Jays fans are getting a little troubled by the slower start at home. They want to cheer him on. They love the guy. I mean, they've had um, 15 runs on 22 hits in these first two games of this series. Yeah. All right, let's get to the Royals player to record most extra bases. All right, I, I got to look at my lineup here because this was a tough <laughs> one. This was a tough one, but I ended up going with Bobby Witt Jr., another shortstop. I'm all about the shortstops, right? Um, last 24 games, 15 extra base hits. So seems like he's on a pretty good run. He also has 18 ribbies in that. Time. Mm -hmm. So he's my pick. All right, I'm going to go with Andrew Benatendi simply because he has the eighth best average in the American League this season. But as I said, you know, we're mostly watching the pitching matchup here yeah. because the Blue Jays could go for their third consecutive shutout, yes. which would be just the second time in franchise history. And the first since 1983. So it's been a long it's been time. A long time. Uh, we'll see. By the way, check out our poll results and thanks to all of you who participated. And okay, I uh, guess the people everyone's have spoken. Vladdy, 52% likely to uh, have the most total bases today. You called it, Sierra. Thanks for making me look smart, guys. Yeah, the people agree. They've spoken and they believe the road splits are real. He's going to light it up today. Let's get you out to Kauffman Stadium for the MLB Game of the Week. Scott and Yonder are standing by. Enjoy the game, everyone.
barbecue, sports, the plaza. This city knows what's up. And waterfalls flowing inside this ballpark. Great sports town. Nice day for some hardball. Surging squad north of the border trying to make it sweep city on a Wednesday afternoon. This is the game of the week. Live on YouTube, the Toronto Blue Jays battle the Kansas City Royals at Kauffman Stadium in Missouri. Scott Braun along with Yonder Alonzo. Hello to the YouTube audience around the globe. And I like this ballpark. Retro vibes here. The waterfalls are sick. Yeah, you know, it's still got that old school feel, but it's, they've renovated it. They've done a phenomenal job. And you know, as a player, you always love coming here. You do? I loved it. Okay. You know, the clubhouse amenities are amazing. The batting cages, very important. The batting cages need to be spectacular. And that batter's box there, one of the best. Perfect. And this guy knows what he's talking about, okay? He knows a good batting cage. And I think eventually so will Bobby Witt Jr. He's just a rookie. He's a couple months into his season. And he's being asked to do a lot yonder, which you know, former first-round pick. Here comes a Bobby Witt with a lot more pop in the 15-game stretch in mid-May that we saw, but then kind of sinking back down. What is it like to go through ups and downs as a rook? Yeah, it's very, it's extremely difficult. But, you know, I think for him, every day is a learning curve. And talking to Matheny, he said, hey, he has the great attitude to go with it. He understands what's going on. Look, I think for me, he's got to be able to hit lefties. If you're going to make a living in the big leagues, you got to be able to do those things. But with that being said, look, he leads all rookies in pretty much every category. I know he's he's had two hits in his last 36 at-bats. There's a lot of pressure, but there's one guy that can get out of it, and that's Bobby Witt Jr. Yeah, and we showed the struggles against lefties, although good news for him, he's going up against a righty starter at least today, so that works. And then there are the Toronto Blue Jays. First off, I know, and we've documented this in the past, you like movies. You're in the I movies, love movies, right? Yeah, what yeah. type of movies, though? Uh, well, I'm going to kick it back pretty old school for you, and the reason that I'm doing that is because Vladdy Guerrero Jr., super stud on the planet at the plate, said on March 17th last year, this is the trailer, <laughs> get ready for the movie. And the beginning of the movie took a little time for the plot to thicken, but now they've won 11 of 13, and we're going way back with this flick. Like, none of these guys were born to even probably know what black and white movies are all about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Look, and I think it starts, obviously, when you look at the great players like Bo Bichette, Jansen doing his thing, and, and Guerrero doing his thing as well. But they're hitting with runners on, and, and that is so hard to do in this game. And the glue guys are killing it. Kirk, with the last 12 games, 467, four home runs, down RBIs, Tapia, a huge addition to the Toronto Blue Jays. Chapman, he's back healthy. His last 10 games, 361 and doing his thing. But with Vladdy, we know who he is. Finished runner-up in the American League MVP race. Led the majors in runs and total bases and in the LL on base percentage and slugging but right now on the road he is getting hot and I think the reasons for that is because he's hitting the ball to right center he loves to hit his on base percentage is booming right now and guess what his exit velocity is at the top of the American League this guy can absolutely mash he was born with a bat in his hands and I love everything this guy is doing he is the whole movie he is that the bad boys feel to it and I love what he's doing right now at the plate he's on one of those home run binges again lately too he already is up to four home runs in the month of June and if you go back to 2020 he is tops in baseball and homers and Salvador Perez who's in the lineup for Kansas City today is number four on that list you know what else we can add on for Toronto the riches that it comes to with their catching department oh, oh my gosh there's so much to get to and that's why we have Brett Dolan we need you Brett tell us more Indeed, Scott, the Toronto Blue Jays have the best catching duo in the big leagues. It's been fun to debate who's even had the better month, Danny Jansen or Alejandro Kirk. As you take a look at the numbers where this catching duo ranks, it's extremely impressive. Entering today, they're first or second in almost every single category. They're number one in OPS. How about batting average? They're first homers, second on-base percentage, second and slugging percentage first. Now, more on Jansen in a moment. He had found his home run stroke. Alejandro Alejandro Kirk was catching yesterday. All he did was pick up four more hits. Could we be talking about Kirk as the catcher in the All-Star game? He's been a lot of fun to watch. The Mexico native yesterday swinging the bat, collecting hits to all portions of the park here at Kauffman Stadium. Ho-hum, just another four-hit game for Alejandro Kirk. Now, 
Danny Jansen back to him. He did take a pitch off his hand on Monday night leading to a fracture. He is on the IL. Now Charlie Montoyo told us today best case scenario maybe two or three weeks. Zach Collins was called up from the minors rather than Gabriel Moreno who MLB pipeline has as the number four prospect in all of minor league baseball. So certainly an embarrassment of riches. Who knows if that might lead to a trade a little bit down the road here in this major league season or whether these Blue Jays will ride this production all season long. But Scott it's been a lot of fun to watch. Oh yeah that's a position where it's tough to find offense except north of the border. But we're in Kansas City Missouri for the Blue Jays and the Royals coming at you with lineups and first pitch time coming at you free on YouTube. Almost game time. This is the game of the week live on YouTube. Scott Braun, Yonder Alonzo, and Brett Dolan. Ready, are you? I'm ready. Let's do this. Hey, man, what you gonna do? Batman gonna come for you. streaming live globally for free on YouTube. Nine more games to go after this one. We have another Blue Jays game later on in the month of June. We in the six. Yes, in the six. <laughs> Over 3.6 million fans subscribe to this MLB YouTube channel and YouTube TV customers. I actually met a couple today who made sure to bring up how pleased they were with YouTube TV. You can stream it live in an MLB pop-up channel as well as 4K. Kauffman Stadium. We're here in real life. Scott Braun and Yonder Alonzo running through the visiting starting nine for the Toronto Blue Jays. Charlie Montoyo. Great chat with him this morning. He was playing a little bit of salsa before we walked into the office and he's rolling with George Springer, Bo Bichette, Vladdy Jr. is going to DH today. Espinal at second. Toppy is back in the lineup for a second consecutive day. Guriel's in left. He sat yesterday. Chapman at the hot corner. Collins will catch with Danny Jansen placed on the injured list yesterday. And Kevin Vigio is going to handle first base. George Springer's riding an 18 game on base streak. He has 50 career leadoff homers. That is fourth most all time behind Craig Vigio, Fonzi Soriano. And Ricky Henderson's way up there, but seven already this season, which matches a season franchise record for the Toronto Blue Jays. Just trying to emphasize the point that this is a special human being at the leadoff position, and he has, I think, 
sort of transformed the position to a more powerful spot. Yeah, no question about it. And look for him to be swinging first pitch. He's a guy that loves to be very aggressive, especially with heaters. He likes to sit on pitches at times, but there's no question about it. This is one of the premier center fielders, or I guess outfielders in the game, and he is doing it in the postseason as well. Brady Singer's third year in the bigs, the 4-1-5 ERA comes in just over 30 innings and he actually took a pause at one point this season they sent him down to the minor leagues comes back up and he has a third pitch that he's implementing more which they've been stressing to him over the past couple of years what else should we know yeah you know and I think with him Brady Singer the 25 year old right hander sometimes sometimes when they sent you down it's not all negative there's a lot of positive in that I think this guy is understanding one of the most the biggest competitors of uh, with the Royals pitching staff Fastball command needs to be there. If he can do that, look, we know he lives in the corners. He will need help from his from the umpire. But what he's learned most in AAA is that changeup. He's got a really good feel for it. And you know what? He's falling in love with it. That's a good thing. Our changeups to face. Oh, they're not fun at not all. Fun. Pull the string on you. <laughs> and you need to be a three-pitch guy if possible as a starter. So let's roll out those three. Statcast 3D. Powered by Google Cloud. It's sinker, which you mentioned. There was a command issue in spring training. They fixed that. Slider, change up. Yeah, and you know, I think for him, it's obviously a sinker slider, but hitters right now are understanding that he's just a two-pitch guy. So if he can continue to throw that change up for strikes and just show it, even to the right-handers and the left-handers, good things will happen. Watch out right here, first pitch. He could be swinging. It takes a strike inside corner, and there is the sinker from Brady Singer. Singer's last two starts, 10 earned runs over 10 and two thirds. Friday was really his first big flub as a start this year. Seven runs, eight hits, three homers, five innings, and a 10 3 loss to Houston. He's ahead of Springer. Live action on YouTube today. Pleased to be with you on a Sunday, Wednesday afternoon. Nice sunshine going here for us. It is. It's a beautiful day. Dealt with some weather the past couple weeks, so. I'm liking what I'm seeing. <laughs> One, two. Pull to Witt Jr. Shows off the gun that he has for out number one. That was a really nice play right there. Showing off the arm, showing off, but all that happens with his feet. He gets set, he gets behind the baseball, understanding he's got a really good arm. As soon as George Springer hit it. There was no chance he was going to beat it up. If you're into blue, today is your day as well. Royals in those baby blue city connects, which I love. That misses wide to Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette with the tweeners today. A little old school. He's been hot, man. Last 13 games, over 300. Loves to slug. He's been slugging much better, especially on the road. Homer in, in, in the opener. Three walks yesterday, Yonder, and he had a three walk game about a week ago. Those were both career highs for him. He's a oh. free swinger. He likes to get after it. Got under that one, wasn't pleased about it. You know what I'm saying. And that's caught by the second baseman, Nicky Lopez. Got a good pitch to hit right there, 2 0. Just pulled off of it a little bit. See that left shoulder right there, just up oh, right there, just leaked a little bit. But yeah, that's, you know, I can live with that. 2-0, that good swing right there, I'll live with it. I know he, that's not what he wanted to do, but it's, it's a lot different than me late or, or, or maybe rolling over a pitch. 2-0, we can live live with that. And you heard him right after, oh, he right did, after he, he made pitch. contact. Yeah. Yep. I'm not going to tell you what he said, but he wasn't pleased. Ball, it's down. Glad he just pulled back on a bunt. Mm. <laughs> This team doesn't shift either, by the way, no. the Royals. About as little as any team in baseball. Big cut and a miss from Vladdy, and then even less so for the Royals defense against right-handed hitters. It's a 1-1 one -one count, very important count right here. If he's getting that pitch right there, good things are going to happen. Vladdy ain't too happy about that. You know, just walking away. He doesn't need to say anything to the umpire. He just needs to just kind of walk away to let him know I wasn't too pleased with that. But now it puts him in a, in a, in a you know, it's a difference right there of being 2-1 or 1-2. That can determine the whole at-bat. And we talked about it earlier. 
you know, Brady Zinger needs to be able to get those pitches in order for him to go deep into this into this game. Any fans, Vladdy Jr. Yeah, that one called strike speaks to him having the highest called strike percentage in baseball. A clean one, two, three first for Brady Singer. 12 pitches. Let's get to the home half. Say something wild yonder. It's time to get crazy when you've been shut out in back to back games at home. Just saying, hey, the Royals players are thinking yeah. about it. Today's the day. Mike Matheny, manager for this Kansas City club, said the same thing. He'll go with Merrifield. Ben Intendi's in there again. Witt Jr. is batting 30, leads all rookies in the extra base hit category. Salvi's DHing so that the rookie MJ Melendez can catch. Carlos Santana's at first. Hot corner, Emmanuel Rivera. Michael A. Taylor's hitting eighth. And Nicky Lopez in the nine hole. You say Kikuchi on the mound, the left-hander with the 3.91 ERA on the season. And the stuff-wise, it's no hit stuff yep. if it all comes together. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, look, he's got a really good fastball, the 30-year-old left-hander. He can spin the baseball too, and I think at times he gets in trouble with that. Talking to Montoya, the manager for the Blue Jays, he says, hey, he can go a whole game just throwing fastballs. Because it's got pep, ha! it's got kind of life right at the end of that. Uh, uh, when it gets to you as a hitter. So look for these guys to hit a lot of foul balls because uh, the spin is real. Two time all star Whit Merrifield. And he went through on that one tipped off the bat 524 consecutive starts for Whit Merrifield by far the most in baseball. Last time he sat June 24th 2018. That was a while ago. Yeah, he, he's going to play. And you know what? What I love that he, he likes to play. He wants to play. No matter what. Like, he had his struggles in the first month of the season. No excuses. He was going to play through them. Yep. There's the franchise record mark. He's on it. And that's a foul ball. Yeah, he's a guy that he, he, he loves to play every day. He loves to wear the uniform every day. Look, it's a long streak. It's a hard streak. It, you need so much luck. You need so much desire. I mean, it, it, there's days where, you know, you just don't have it. But with him, it's the consistency is there. He's the same player every day. And you know what I love about him? The mindset. He understands who he is and how important he is to his ball club. Great attitude. Takes one wide from Kikuchi. Jay's starter coming off a Friday loss against Minnesota. Four runs, three homers, four and two thirds. Popped up. Shallow right, Tapia moving in. He's not going to get there. What's your scouting report on Mr. Kikuchi? Well, the 30 year left hander loves to spin the baseball. That's one thing he likes to do. He likes to use the top of the zone, being the, using the all four quadrants. Commanding the slider early is going to be key for him. He likes it a lot. He likes that split change as well. But for me, it's about late in the count, surprising guys with heaters up in the zone. If he can do those things, he's going to have a good start. And Merrifield strikes out. That's that slider right there. He loves it. 
It's a harder one. He has two different types of shapes to that. He throws the hard one with two strikes. That kind of looks like a fastball that kind of gets into your hands for a right-hander. And then he's got the get me over one to steal a strike. Right there, that's a good pitch. That's where you want to miss. You want to be able to miss down and in. You don't want to be able to miss up and away because that's a good pitch to hit for a hitter. But again, location is key for him and determination of quality controls of pitches is, is very important for today's start. Andrew Benintendi hitting 320 on the season, best on the club. Good for Benintendi, man. He, he he struggled a little bit early on here with Kansas City, and now he's back to his his ways. Loves the way I love the way he he hits his approach, uses all fields. He's not he's not so much wanting to slug. He wants to be a good player. He wants to be he wants to hit the ball very hard. That's his main goal. That's his key. Skin on base and uses athleticism. And as you can see, if you're thinking off speed, he's all over it. Yeah, and the reason you hit, you know, off speed like that is because you're able to let the ball travel. Okay, you're not you're not you're not wanting to spin off the baseball. You're not wanting to roll over on balls. He understands his strengths and that's gap to gap. You get so much information right here on this 3 0 take. Ooh, all four. Not close. What's the info? Well, you want to know, you want to see a fastball, you want to get the spin, you understand you're taking. So at that time, I love the 3 0 takes when they would give it to me early on in the game because you wanted to understand the life that the pitcher had in the first inning. Remember, in the first inning, the pitcher, he's trying to get his routine, his groove on as well. But maybe later on in that fourth, fifth inning, Benetani might come up with a man on second and third, and now he's seen all his pitches. So Good take, good walk, and we, move, and we move on. And let your rookie of the year candidate try and do some damage. 28 runs batted in for Bobby Witt Jr. Tops on the club. And the live chat is very active right now on your screen. Like the MLB channel actually said, do we think Bobby Witt can be rookie of the year? Oh, yeah. he's. I mean, look, he's, he's leading. Pretty much all categories in, in the American League and, and rookie stats, but just what a player, what a what a what a person. You know, he, he's got all the tools in the world. The mindset is right. You know, Matheny can just he raves about him all morning, about how special this guy is going to be, how special he is right now to this ball club. Well raised is what you hear often too. Damn. Big league dad. There's a situation right now. You know, he's, Coochie's throwing five balls in a row. As a young player, you, you hear a lot of, you know, if I'm struggling, I want to be able to swing early in the count. I'm interested to see what type of, 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 of swing he would have here on this 2 0. It's got to be a cookie. You know, the only way you got to go if it's a cookie. And it's not. Time out! Uh, that's a good visit right there by Zach Collins. While we have a moment, the pitch arsenal for Yusei Kikuchi, StatCast 3D, powered by Google Cloud. Yeah, he likes that four-seamer a lot. You know, he's going to use his cutter at times just to show it, but his fastball slider command is going to be key for him. I, I love his fastball. I think his fastball is the, is the way to go. You show the slider, you show the changeup, but for him, his fastball command at all times. He's changed his pitch mix with Toronto. They have stressed to him more of that heater, less of that cutter. And that's what we're seeing. You know, it gets on you. And what I mean by that is that 95 feels like 97, 98. And you got to be on top of it. That's why he has really good spin to it. He kind of short arms it too. So as a hitter, it kind of gets on you. So not only does it have spin, does it have life, but he short arms it so it's harder to see. Okay, that's a late swing right there, 3 1. That's actually a hitter's count where you, you say to yourself, hey, this guy's got some, some good life on his on his fastball. I either want to be early on, so it's either a foul ball or something hit to left center. I want to be on time with this because this is my count. I want to be able to do damage in these counts. Now you're 3-2. Anything, anything can come 3-2. All four. There's another miss. Back-to-back -back walks for KC. Now early on, Kikuchi's laboring with his command. Trying to trying to slow things down a little bit. He's rushing at times. That's why you're you seeing him miss more on the inner part of the plate than the outer part of the plate. It's because he's a little too early and too quick with it. 
the big man Salvi. DH today. 2015 World Series MVP seven time all star five gold gloves for silver slugger awards. Probably the most popular baseball player in this city since George Brett. Absolutely. I talked to him early on today and said you know how hard has it been for you. And he says you know he was actually asking me like you know how hard was it for you as well when you had losing ball clubs or you guys weren't playing as well and I said you know patience and he said absolutely I think patience is key here especially the young guys understanding that hey we've won before the attitude is winning every single day but at all times we got to learn from our mistakes and we got to get better every single day. The work habit is there. We are going to work. We are going to work very hard. But we also need to have a little bit of patience and understanding that the guys are going to come and the guys are going to produce. What a great attitude, huh? I mean, you see him every day. He's smiling. You, know, you wouldn't even notice what's going on, you know, outside that clubhouse. But He's a great sport. He's a great guy. He's one of the most liked. And by the way, guy always smells good, man. I, every time <laughs> I would go hit, I was like, man, what's going on, man? It's Kikuchi fans him, but I was going to ask you about that at some point. He actually wears women's perfume during games. <laughs> Dates back to when uh, Alcides Escobar was his teammate. Yeah. He said, you know, spray some here for good luck. He liked it. He said, hey, I'm close to the umpire all day. Ordered a dozen boxes of the scent and the umps thank him for smelling so nice every single day. You know, the other thing I think about as he strikes out is last year Salvi had the year of his life yeah. in the big leagues. 48 homers matched Flatty Jr. for tops in baseball. I and mean, this was a catcher who was a top three slugger in the sport. And it's been a little rougher for him. There's been some injuries. I think even some things maybe that haven't been listed like the lower half which is always a problem for catchers because it gets worked where last year he was really implementing more of his lower half and it took his pop into the next level. So something to keep in mind with him. He did homer in back to back games this past weekend. He's got help now. Yep. MJ Melendez. Oh what an absolute stud this kid is. I love everything about this kid. He's such an athlete. Not only is he a catcher he's a good runner. He's a good he can play some right field. They're working on him at third base. Love everything about this kid. You know, I talked to Pete Griffo before the game. He's the bench coach for Mike Medini, and he was raving about this kid. He said how smart he is. His IQ level is extremely high. The future is bright for the Royals. The future is bright for MJ Melendez. Heads up. Now he's bought himself to a heater's count right here. 2-1. Uh, uh, again, we, we talk about hitters counts, what you want to do. You want to make sure you know he's got that spin off so you want to make sure you're out early right if you get fooled by a slider so be it you're 2 2 and then you go to work with a two strike approach but this is a count right here you want to take advantage of if you're MJ. This is a lefty bat who's currently 9 for 23 against Southpaws. He is hitting left handed pitching so far I know small sample size but good start for him and he went for it. Yeah, but that's a healthy hack right there. You know, he was sitting heater, but he got that slider, kind of hanging cutter slider, and he put a good swing on it. He was just underneath it, but the intent was there. The approach was there is, hey, this is my time right now. I'm going to make sure my approach is right. If I get something in the inner third, I'm going to be launching. Out in front, he was the regular catcher for a couple weeks when Perez was on the IL for a sprained left thumb. Now spending some time in the outfield as well. I asked about third base today. It sounds like it's more of an emergency option. Right. They're like, let's just keep it to two <laughs> positions for now. I heard catcher's pretty tough to learn yeah. in the bigs. Spoiling away at bats right there. That's that's a that's a beautiful way of just continuing the long inning, the long at bat. Up to 27 pitches already. I mean, that's that's already. Even if the Royals don't score right here, that's still a win. If you have Kikuchi at 27 pitches, 30 pitches, that's always, no matter what, a chance to get into that bullpen early on in this game. You think they have a book on Melendez or what? 
Slider City, and now a fastball, oh, oh, oh. and it could find grass. It does. And it's going to score the first run of the game. Kansas City up 1-0. Benintendi come on down. It's a double by MJ Melendez. Right spot, right time. Yeah, he stayed on that ball right there on that fastball after getting a lot of sliders, but it was a good pitch. It was a good two strikes. He understood that, hey, they were giving him a lot of sliders, but he picked up that fastball. They didn't try to do too much. He stayed real short with it, and guess what? When you get into a long at bat like that, the baseball gods will reward you, and they sure did for MJ Melendez. Nice base running to get to second. There's Chapman. Knew it wasn't going to be close enough. Also, wasn't able to find it, to locate it. And most importantly for all the KC fans watching right now, they are on the board for the first time in this series. Exit velocity. Did you hear it or do you want to guess it? I'll guess it. Okay. I mean, probably what, 70 miles an hour off the bat? 66. Very okay, good. I was, I was close. Very good. Yeah, <laughs> I've had a few of those. I know what they, they, they know feel what, good though. Don't I know they, what they, they feel. go like that. And, and, and you know what's the best? When you break your bat and you die a hero. That bat dies a hero. <laughs> it's, a, it's a base hit. It's an RBI. It's a two out RBI, which are huge. But right now, you know, Kikuchi is laboring. He, he needs to make sure that, you know, he, he gets quicker outs. That's a good. That's a good slider right there. That's that. That's a get me over slider. That's a good pitch. He hasn't been able to land that early on for strikes. If he can continue that and throw a few of those, that would be good news for the Blue Jays. Carlos Santana. He's How about Carlos trying Santana? to find it. I mean, the career is yeah. incredible. You think about the plate discipline for Carlos. Not catching up to the fastball yet this year. Yeah, all star and silver slugger in 2019. Still has a really good eye. I mean, he'll give you some good at bats like this 1 1 pitch right there. If it's not there, he ain't going. And it's like the umpires understand that too. You know, it's like they might they might give that to a rookie, they might give that to somebody else, but Santana has created this repetition of and, and, and rep around the league where, hey, he does have a good eye, and if it's not there, I'm not swinging. So the ump basically doesn't have to work. Just go off. Well, of what wouldn't necessarily <laughs> say that, but <laughs> as he does go after one that still was in the zone at 96, he's shaking his head. Yeah, he wants that pitch back. It was up in the zone on that good four seamer, but again, he's got life. So a lot of these hitters are always going to be underneath that baseball. Akikuchi has ways to go about this. There's some good back and forth in the chat right now. Blue Jays channel going. That was our first run given up since Sunday afternoon. It's Wednesday, by the way. Yeah, this team can pitch. Yeah. Look at all the change-ups. He only uses it against right-handed hitters. Ball's in. Interesting sequencing though as he's using some of his secondary stuff quite a bit early on in this action, which I know you were emphasizing. Hey, fastball, let's go. But the fastball command isn't quite there for him at the moment, so he's searching for it. Yeah, the fastball command is just not there right now. They're trying to get somebody going right now at the Blue Jays bullpen. Because you can tell he's laboring, he's trying to find it, he's a little too quick, he's trying to make the adjustment as well on the mound. That's why they're going with that changeup, trying to slow him down a little bit. When you when you do those things, is it's a lot easier to slow a pitcher down when you're going to the changeup rather than the slider, because the slider you want to get out in front, you want to spin off of that. But with the changeup, you kind of have to stay back on that to throw a good changeup. So good job of Zach Collins right there, reading that and understanding that and trying to make adjust and adjustment and work with Kikuchi. Giving it a shot at second. Two down, home first. KC up 1 0. Kikuchi about to fire his 36th pitch of the first inning. The 
Blue Jays lost their Cy Young award winner from last year Robbie Ray he signs with Seattle but they added the man on the mound right now along with Kevin Gossman who has been dynamite for them. Lights out. Kikuchi signed for three years 36 million. Yeah and you know what this th this may be his last hitter I, I feel yeah. like they're, they're not going to. They're not going to really tour around that much. When you throw 40, 40 pitches, close to 40 pitches in an inning, I, I don't necessarily see him go a little bit longer than this if he continues to labor here in this inning. So this could be it, but if he does get through Emmanuel Rivera, would you send him back out for the second and hope that maybe things yeah, work you have out in to. between? I, yeah, I think you have to. And with that being said, I, I know you've shut down the Royals for the past couple of days, but you kind of have to and hopefully extend this game for him. That's a good slider right there. Good slider cutter right there. Bearing down at the hands of the hitter. You think you're going to go as a hitter. You're saying, oh, that's going to be a good pitch. That's a that's a heater type feel to it. And all of a sudden it just drops out of the table. Good pitch right there. And that is on the ground past short. Emmanuel Rivera will drive in two more for KC and make it three nothing Royals. Slow roller gets through the inning continues. Yeah, that's not, not trying to do too much. Just simplifying the approach, understanding that he's got two strikes with him. He's got to get shorter, eliminate that leg kick a little bit, and understanding up the middle is your friend. There's nothing better than getting a base hit up the middle, especially with two outs, especially with the bags loaded. Just a good piece of hitting right there, and not enough for Bichette. He plates the rookies with Junior and Melendez. Santana over to third. They're on the corners now for Michael A. Taylor. Use a baseball term to say the Royals were due for a first inning like this. Understatement. Yeah. Matheny knew it too, right? Yeah. Talk to him early on, and you can just see it in his eyes. Hey, today is the day. Today is the day. They were 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position in this series, and now already 2 for 3 today. This is a 17 and 37 team, worst record in Major League Baseball at the moment, taking on a Blue Jays team that is. Surging 33 up 22 down and they've won 11 of 13 games. Look at the first inning issues yeah. for KC that they're working on. They've been one of the worst but. You know today so far. They're, they're, they're definitely the, the aggressor. Ha! You say Kikuchi now at. 42 pitches in the first all star last year sub three and a half ERA in the first half and then he did experience a bit of a slide in the second half of the season. Heads up. How about this stadium. Huh? How about this place right now. I told you in the beautiful open I'm weather, a big beautiful fan. summer day game right now. I mean there's nothing better. huh? Grab yourself a hot dog and enjoy the day. Or maybe maybe some barbecue wings. <laughs> I like I like some barbecue. What are you wings. hinting at? <laughs> I don't know. I you like some barbecue order. wings, man. <laughs> wings, some ribs. I mean, this is the spot. If you're gonna do it, this is the spot, Scotty. You took down notes from our driver last night. Oh yeah, man. I asked him. I was like, hey, what are the spots? What about this spot? I mean, Kikuchi really needed this call. Yeah, but you know what? When you're being laboring like this, it's hard for the umpire to get a feel of your zone. You know, just as much as the pitcher wants that zone as well, it's hard for the umpire to work with him. I think he's done right here. Got to go get him. He's going to be thinking about that one pitch, though. That yeah. was in the zone. That was a strike. That was strike three. 45 pitches, though. Yeah, and that's the most for any starting pitcher in a first inning this season. That's going to do it for Yusei Kikuchi. Bags full of Royals again. Santana Rivera and Taylor on. Kikuchi out. Here comes Trent Thornton.
A 45 pitch first from Yusei Kikuchi and he can't finish off the inning records just two outs he's responsible for a bases loaded situation three runners on for Kansas City three runs in bottom one Scott Braun and Yonder Alonzo along with Brett Dolan down on the field we'll hear from Brett in just a few Kauffman Stadium sunshiny day Trent Thornton in next for Toronto used to be a starter so he could pick up multiple innings here last outing was Monday in this series one inning a hit a strikeout no runs in that eight nothing win for Toronto Trent Thornton 28 year old four seam slider curve sinker likes to use the four seam though more to, to left handers and look for that slider he's got a really good slider good spin. Nicky Lopez on a oh, hot man. tough one and Bo Bichette is going to get him. Wow. What an absolute play man. Wow. Tough hop. Snap throw. Bo knows they needed that. Three nothing Royals after one. Long bottom of the first three runs come across for KC. It could have been much worse for Toronto if not for their stud shortstop Bo Bichette. What a play on a tough hop. Yeah very soft hands right there understanding the infield. We saw him early on at 9 a.m. catching ground balls and really getting a feel for that infield and that day game infield. It's completely different than at night. So it's, it's good by him. Obviously we understand what type of shortstop and what type of range he's got. He's a gamer. Oh he's a gamer all right. You know Scott you're, you're we're, we're all you're a gamer too man. Yeah. We're not all gamers. gamers. Not all of no. them. Not all of them. You're definitely a gamer. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Santiago Espinal is five for nine in this series including a home run that he cranked in game one a two run shot to left field. Pulled a change up. There's a fastball from Brady Singer yeah, look, who was hanging out for a while. Yeah, look for, for Toronto's hitters to potentially uh, get a groove on here and, and take a pitch no, it's up. early on but go swinging afterwards. In the chat Dodger films often with us on a weekly basis threat of prediction and there were a number of those coming across before the game started. Oh what a grab at third by Rivera. Quick reaction and he's there. Vacuum mode. What a play. First reactions right there. First step. Whew. That ball had some spin on it right there, but it's that first step. Boom. Understanding what's happening right there. He's got a top spinner line drive. I don't call it the hot corner for a reason. I think that's where the speed of the game in person that makes it funny. feel more real. I mean, that came at Rivera at 106 miles yeah. an hour. I, you know, I played first base my whole life, but I had a couple stints at third base. Yeah. I wanted zero part of that, Scotty. <laughs> zero. <laughs> no chance. It's a scary <laughs> position. I was, when, you know, we were playing. I was playing Boston the time I played, and yeah, these big guys, Hanley Ramirez. 
Oof. Xander Bogarts, I mean, it, it, it just Mike Napoli and, and all these right-handed power studs. I wanted zero part to do with third base. Made about three errors that game. One was fielding, two, I mean, I looked like, like Dorn from Major League. Couldn't get in front of the baseball. I was terrified. I, I told Bo Mel with the Oakland A's after that, said, listen, Bo Mel, I, I just don't think I I'm ready to play third base in the big leagues. Just keep me at first. <laughs> <laughs> it's a caffeinated position. You better be awake. Oh, yeah, Bo Mel said, yeah, we, we, we saw what happened. We, we understand. <laughs> Three hours later, you're never playing third base again. <laughs> <laughs> they said, see you later. Back to first young man and worry about your hitting as That's well. right. Pretty <laughs> much. I had no chance. Yeah, that'll distract it. It's what makes Rivera so good and Chapman on the other end. He's one of the best in the biz for a while now. Full boat to Tapia. And uh -oh. gets a good hold of this one. Oh, he Deep knows right it. field. He's all over it. Ooh, that ball was absolutely destroyed. Splashdown for Tapia. It's three to one. His second of the season. Out of way, out of way, out of way, out of way. Not a big power bat, but that went 441 feet. Oh, he can hit them, especially when they're hanging sliders like that. He put an absolute charge to it. Stay behind the baseball. He's been swinging a hot bat the past 10 games. I love everything about this swing. Oh, my goodness, what an absolute bomb. He knew it as soon as he hit it, and that's right. Go put on that jacket. <laughs> oh, lean on that thing. Woo. That ball is gone in any stadium in the big leagues. Not too many guys go on top of that fountain right there. Shooter. He's like, I spoke to Yonder for 15 minutes today. <laughs> Look at me now. I'm calling you every day. Oh, man. You played with him. Oh, he's amazing, man. He's, you know, guys just gravitate to him. He's, he's a great guy. Loves to play. Dude. You know, very professional guy, quiet guy, but if you get to know him, man, he is unbelievable. One of the best guys out of the Dominican Republic. Pretty much plays with his hair, hair on fire. He's got some really, really good flow, but a good player nonetheless. Singer gets one of those signature calls for strike three on Guriel, his second K of the day, and still all smiles from Tapia. I, I meant he's not a big power, he's a great singles contact guy. But big strength. There's the pitch that looked a little bit wide to me. Oh, wide. That was a good slider, though. But hey, look. Brady needs those pitches. He, he needs those pitches to go to be able to go deeper into into this game. We keep it real with the strikes, oh. right? Yeah, we do. And you know, at times, <laughs> at times, it's it, it could be a little bit dicey. But you know, how about Matt Chapman, though? I was hanging out with him in the cages like old times. My buddy. Did you toss a few to him? Um, toss a few to him. I had a nice little lavender. Right? You saw me afterwards. I was like, man, I was just hanging out with chat. Like, what did you just do? Yeah, I was in the cage with my boys. <laughs> Guillermo Martinez, hitting coach for the Toronto Blue Jays, played with him in high school. Great guy. He's done a phenomenal job, though. As for Witt, and the throw off balance is Mandela. money. Impressive play from both shortstops, and Tapia goes long, 441 feet. Jays trailing 3-1 mid two. I think we're going to have some offense today.
3-1 Royals were in the bottom of the second, and this is a Toronto team that almost made the postseason. Last year, we're looking at the final standings in 2021, just one game away from the Red Sox and the Yankees. They needed one of them to fall on the final day of the season. They both rallied. I mean, that's two really 90-plus win ball clubs that in this year's game would have a better chance as we add a wild card team this year. And actually, if you look at the AL East, the four teams besides Baltimore are all in playoff position at the moment. So, first poll question, how many AL East teams will make the postseason? One, two, three, four. I'm going to help them and say, don't pick one. That's going to be wrong. <laughs> so eliminate that. And then, Yonder, you pick. Yeah, I'm going four with four. Bold. You think I, four? Yeah, I think I'm going with four. I think all four teams. And you know what? I think they did this. And I'm glad they did this because all four teams should be in the postseason. You know, it, it's all about getting the best teams. And, you know, I think they certainly deserved it. And, you know, I, I think all four of these guys will That's be in there. It. Four of these teams. Where I'm looking is the AL Central. I'm wondering if the Twins are legit and can stay healthy enough. Twins and White Sox play some softer opponents in their division. Yep. That could be where it becomes three instead of four in the AL East. Floater, shallow center, Springer, not going to get there. That'll splash down to base hit for Whit Merrifield. Top of the order again here in the second for the Royals after nine batted in the first. Yeah, you know, we talk about this stadium being very big, especially in the outfield, but. You know, it's not so much the slugging, you know, trying to hit home runs here in the stadium as the actual bloops that fall. You get a lot of bloops in here because the outfielders are playing much deeper, especially the center fielder. He's got to play much deeper. He's got so much more ground to cover. But with that being said, yeah, that's a, a, a win for, for the home team right there. Wow. You know, look how deep he is. You can, there's not much you can do about that. I mean, you can try, but it, there's so much ground to cover. And as an outfielder, you kind of you got to have to take your, you know, right now they're actually playing a little bit more in. They're not really. Oh, here we go. They're not really respecting so much the power of Ben Attendee in center and in left. They're kind of playing a little bit more shallower. But in right, Ryan Miltabia, he, he's he's more into his regular dimensions of it. But again, it's understanding your hitter, understanding what they're trying to do and Hopefully making sure you cover all grounds. He got it. Oh, that's a good pitch got right him. there. On three pitches. We talked about Horn. He likes to absolutely spin the baseball. His best pitch for me, I think, is his slider. That one was a good one. He's a high spin guy with the breaking ball. about wit in that play right there he made on Chapman he made that look very very easy going to his left showing that cannon I mean this guy can absolutely do it all he's just such a special player and you know, you know talking to him earlier on how big of he is you know his size he's just such a big kid for a shortstop and he can oh. clock the baseball and does on a hop to Guriel, two on for KC, a couple base hits in the second. Absolute rocket. Left his bat at 107 miles an hour. You know, he got a fastball count right there, and he did not miss it. He was very short. Good to see for him. He's been, you know, grinding away his at bats, but that's just part of his rookie, the rookie year. You go through stages like that. Right there now, he's he's having himself a good day and a walk and an absolute rocket to left field. You hear that click off the bat. It sounded different. It does. Ah! <laughs> you know, Scott, I used to hit him like that. Oh, I know. Day, but hey, how about <sighs> in college? That was different, though. But how about in college when I'm calling your games at University of Miami when uh -huh. you're in your prime, in college prime, you're a junior. <laughs> My prime. I'm saying your college I mean, prime. Okay. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> your best year, your junior year, you're hitting him to the parking lot or the parking deck. And that's coming off. What was the sound? Yeah. Bing. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that, was that, aluminum. Was, that was dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that was, was my dangerous, point. That's what I was getting. I mean, to. right now, that that ball <laughs> that he hit, that sounded just different. It exploded off his bat. I love that. Oh man. 
Mike Tozer, the hitting coach, assistant hitting coach for the Kansas City Royals, just absolutely raves about this kid. We talked about him, how much everybody loves this kid, his attitude, the way he goes about it, and you know, Salvi Perez loves him too. I think he's going to have a huge, huge career here with Kansas City. There he is. Kansas City pretty solid with their top three picks in the past 15 or so years. Alex Gordon, number two overall in 2005. There's a strikeout. Salvi goes down. Yeah, once again, that slider right there, he's got it. He feels it. You know, he's, he's got a good feel for it right now, and he certainly uh, is throwing it in any count. A little more chase again this year from Salvi. Always a free swinger, but I mean, last year he was just so dialed in with the hitter's eye as well on what pitches to smash. Yeah. Nice pitch by Thornton. Popped up. There's Guriel to retire Melendez. A scoreless second from Trent Thornton. It's 3-1 KC through two. Let's crack open the third. It's 3-1. Royals looking to avoid the sweep against Toronto because Alex Manoa shut them down yesterday. 11th overall pick back in 2019. Second fastest in that draft to make it to the bigs. Strong rookie year. Now as a sophomore, you can see what he's doing, including if you watched him last night working that two-seamer. I was loving it. And it is time for Miami talk. Stop <laughs> around Yonder Alonzo and Alec Manoa. Alec, how are you doing today? I saw you earlier and said, hey, you got all Miami guys, so you're in good hands right now. How's everything? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Really man. good. Tell us about yesterday. So we're showing the line right now 90 pitches, six clean, three walks, four Ks. How did it feel? Uh, felt good. Um, was kind of excited to go out for that seventh inning, but um, they kind of had a long half and. Charlie banged it, but uh, felt, felt really good. Uh, was able to attack the zone and just let that offense do what they do. We're watching Zach Collins lead off here in the third inning against Brady Singer. And by the way, I'll mix this in. Another out, Miami right? guy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, for the YouTube chat right now, questions that you have for Alec Manoa, let us know. I'll relay them over if this inning gets long enough for us. And we're watching some of your work from yesterday. Hey, tell me about that two seamer. I heard. You picked some things up from Kevin Gossman. Um, yeah, so I actually used the, that front hip two seamer a little bit last year, and I don't know, but for some reason we kind of got away from it. And um, you know, talking with Gaz, you know, my I think it was a couple weeks ago in Anaheim, um, and he was just talking about you know trying to find something that can kind of get lefties uh, to not lean over the plate, and and one of the things he was like. You know, hey, maybe start front hipping that sinker, and I was like, yeah, I felt really comfortable, you know, doing it last year, and um, then that following bullpen, I basically threw, I think, 25 pitches, and like 18 of them were front hip sinkers, just trying to, 
trying to work on getting that pitch and then it's kind of cool you know you go and you work on something in the bullpen and then it transfers over to the game it's, it's pretty awesome to watch. I, like, I, I love the ability of making adjustments especially to freeze left handed hitters with that two seamer I mean I've always felt like if you freeze guys with that two seamer everything else is in play right that change up that slider but talk to me about a little bit about Jose Barrios man he's one of your boys he's one of those guys that you've learned a lot similar mechanics obviously yep. you're probably three or four inches a little bigger than him but how much fun has he been to you and, and another having another Latin guy in that starting rotation that can you know you can be like his boys boys with no 100% he's he's get up get up that Collins get out of here a ride right center that's for the 305 baby no, baby. boy Z boy <laughs> Well, he talked about it earlier today. He said, hey, this is a big start for me, man. I got to make sure I pick up this slack. Hell yeah, there he is. Out. But that, that's how you pick up for your boys right there. There he is. I said it was Miami talk. I mean, literally Miami. I'm not going to gush so much. I said, you start talking about Miami, right? Collins gets going. <laughs> <laughs> that's where he oh, played ball. put on that jacket, man, and Alex enjoy in Miami. That, that one would have ended up in the parking lot over there in Court Gables, huh? That's oh, right. We were talking about that parking deck that Yonder just destroyed. They basically had to rebuild it after oh, yeah. Yonder was drafted. But hey, Alex, Zach, we hung out with for a little bit today. Boy, is he boy? <laughs> Yonder oh, was man. like, is he starting? You gotta let him know. Right you gotta now. let him know. That's for the boys in Miami, man. <laughs> oh, he knows. He knows. Um, but yeah, Jose has been he's been he's been great for me, man. You know, just uh, being able to learn from him and. Uh, being able to p pick his brain and you know like you said a lot of our stuff is very similar um, you know so especially being able to focus you know when when he's out there on the mound and what he's doing to hit her especially if I'm going to face that lineup you know a couple of days later and just seeing what he's what he's doing how he's attacking him and and you know he he's really good with that front front hip sinker to, to lefties as well and backdooring it to righties so um, kind of just visualizing, you know, the, the placement of it, where it needs to start. Get through there. It does. What, bitch? Vigio with a base hit. Nice, man. I, like, I, I got to ask you a little bit of a non-baseball talk, man, but what's the most that you, that you, the most, the food that you miss the most when you're out there in Toronto, man? Oh, patelitos, my gosh. Croquetas, <laughs> rice and beans. We can talk about that all day. <laughs> <laughs> what's your go-to, though? What's your go-to? Uh, arroz, frijoles. Uh, <laughs> The, the one I miss the most is uh, pollo empanizado. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, I got my girlfriend at home. You know, I, <laughs> she makes a hell of a rice and beans. Uh, okay. And we, we got her working on the, the pollo empanizado. Uh, but, yeah, before every start, you know, if we're at home, she, she makes me the rice and the beans and the, the chicken con la cebollita. And, <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> to make me feel at home a little bit. <laughs> con la cebollita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yonder was already hungry. Oh, man, I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm starving. Unleashed. The menu. Now I hear, Time for lunch, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is. Very much so. I, I hear Grandma also brings it with the hair game. <laughs> We've got evidence as that one is fl flying up for... He just missed that. Maryfield, yeah, he just missed it. And into the glove for the first out here in the third. And that gave me enough time to queue up the hair. Here's, here's your mom coming through. This on May 8th in Cleveland. So we're showing video. I don't know if you can see, but Grandma next to Mom some purple in the hair, right? Like, yeah, that's what I'm talking purple? about. Yeah, no, it's it's purple. Nice. It's purple. Yeah, she's uh, her favorite color is purple, man, and 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 she loves it, and she's she loves wearing you know the hair and dyeing her hair, and um, she loves wearing purple and the purple nails and everything, you know. So uh, we just call her the purple lady. <laughs> Alex, does she watch every game? Yeah, she does. Uh, she watches every game that, that she has access to. So, so is she watching this right now, this this interview we're having? I guarantee you I'm probably going to have a text message. And, All right, and well, <laughs> you got to tell her something in Spanish then. <laughs> Might as well. Abuelita, mandame más chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the, you know, every grandma has uh, little little things. That, get the third. Oh, he's going. All he's up. Hi, boy. Oh, All oh, oh, that leads to is that secondary right there. That secondary is what allows him to go to third base, man. That's a really good heads up base running right there. And that's winning baseball right there, man. First yep. to third, secondary, doing the right things, especially with one out. Yeah. Bo Bichette gets one through the right side. Hey, so. how, much, how much fun has it been watching this guy up to bat right now, man? Oh, man. He's uh, <laughs> just a blessing to be able to, to have a front row seat every night, you know what I mean? Last year was kind of like every time he stepped in the box, he was breaking some sort of record or doing something, you know, crazy. And, and this year is kind of the same thing, you know. And 
and he's just driving balls and he's working hard and, and he's doing everything he can to help this team win man he's he's fun to watch. Yeah. You know there's something it's always something when you watch these great ones man that people don't know right and and, and you know we, we, don't, we don't talk about as much as but how smart he is of a hitter man. Yeah he makes adjustments he's setting up people at a young age I mean we're talking about this guy's not even 25 yet is yeah. that something that you see on a, on a consistent basis. Yeah 100 percent and and you know he's just so humble too you know I think. Um, there's a lot of times like talking to him and, and he'll even ask me like hey what would you what would you throw me and uh, and I tell him I'm like I'm like man why why are you why are you worried why are you worried about that you can hit anything you know so he's just he's he, he understands the game's hard he understands it's not easy uh, he understands he needs to work really hard every day and, and he goes out there and, and he does that and um, just stays within himself and, and tries to do anything that he can to help the team win. Counts 2 1 to Vladdy Jr. Spending some time with Dude, Alec Manoa. Ball right here. Yeah? Why not? That's, that'd see. be great. Uh, while we wait for it, questions flowing from the YouTube chat right now. Jordan Hebert, what pitcher did Alec look up to growing up? Um, oh, there's the slider. He didn't hang it, though. Um, I got to I gotta go with Verlander, man. Um, I just think, one. yeah, he's a, he's a horse. Uh, just the way that he goes out there and, and, and he grinds and he'll start the game 93 94 and, <laughs> and, and then he's 98 90 it's the eighth <laughs> inning and like 104 pitches and he's at 98 99 and just vintage Verlander like we, we me and my brother used to love watching him that's a run yes that's a it run. is out of boy the play to first and the Jays chipping into this advantage for KC now Coming in and tying yep. up the ball game at three. Uh, but yeah, just just watching him. I was always a hitter growing up, so Barry Bonds is always my 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 favorite guy to watch. But um, definitely Verlander, you know, in his Detroit days, and you know, he's just a dog, man. Just going out there, he doesn't care. And, and if the game got harder, he got even harder. You know, he got even tougher. So um, just super fun to watch him, and got to watch him live, you know, a few weeks back. So. Um, that, was, that was a really, really cool experience for me. Good time to be on with us, too. Your team plays catch up quickly. It was 3 nothing Royals, a home run in the second from Tapia, and then Collins with the homer, the RBI ground out just now from Guerrero, and catch up is complete already. Fresh ball game here in the top of the third. Another one coming in from the YouTube Scotty, crowd. Yeah. Before that YouTube crowd, you know what's the best thing about Alec is that he, he raves and loves. The big moments, right? Where, where early on in his career, he was like, I, I ain't scared of facing the top end of this of this American League's lineups. I, I, I welcome this. Is that something that you know you kind you kind of brought up from you know your mom growing up, or just the city where you're from, or, or wh where does that come from? Yeah, man, I think it's uh, just the culture uh, that I grew up in, and uh, kind of just had to grind for everything. So. Uh, now, now that I have a chance to be here, I'm not. I'm not going to stray away from it. I'm going to continue to grind, and continue to attack, and uh, continue to try and, and do my best and represent, you know, uh, my people and, and represent Miami and represent God as, as best as I can. Alec, this was fun. Let's do it again sometime. Let's do yeah. team score. Let's Thanks, do it. brother. And Stay healthy, up. man. Hey, thank you, guys. Miami mode. It's over <laughs> for now. But yonder and me are still here. That's right. Mid three, tied at three.
Last of the third tie ball game. Two more from the Blue Jays in the previous half inning while we hung out with Alec Manoa. There were a ton of questions coming in too. And actually, can I just tell you, I think this one was probably my favorite. I just didn't get to it because we ran out of time. Miles asked, how do you feel about only being an 84 in MLB the show, like his rating? Ooh. I mean, Alec Manoa at this point, <laughs> every last year going and this up. year, he's he's got to be at least in my mind in the uh, at least in the 90s. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. That is into right and another knock for Kansas City. This this one coming from Carlos Santana. He reaches for the second time this afternoon. Good day for offense yeah, so that, far. That's an ambush fastball right there. First pitch swinging. He doesn't rarely do those things, but when you get a fastball like that. Right down the middle and especially up in the zone you, you won't miss it especially a hitter like this guy who's always been able to hit he can sure hit a fastball with the best of them. It's probably a guy most pitchers think they can steal a strike against. Yeah he goes deep into into the at bats but I mean don't get it fooled he sees a fastball like that and interesting too you know because you had a long inning. Right on defense and, and most of the time you, it's a it's a it's a thin line into trying to ambush a guy because if it's a first pitch swinging out then you're in the hole right now where your second guy because your second guy then has to take after that long inning right so you got to give yourself a breather but he understands himself he understands if he gets a heater he's not going to miss it. I learned that early on in my career Scotty. After a long inning, and you're due up first, for the most part, if you swung first pitch and you didn't get a hit, you would get back in the dugout, and guys would chirp at you, "Hey, man, what are you doing, man? It's really? part of the team." Oh yeah. Do you think they still got to play that, for though? the team? I, oh yeah. You know, I think too. Hey. The, these these players are so much smarter, and, and they're just they understand the game so much better. Um, the analytic department has done a great job, and, and just in general, where the, our game is at right now, it's 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 as good as it's ever been. Three pitch punch out for Trent Thornton working the third. There's the slider. There's that slider. Michael A. Taylor ha! takes the strike. Just back from the COVID IL. Two hits and a walk on Monday. He was actually the only Royal to do anything on Monday and then sat yesterday. Connects to center, backing up Springer. He's there. You know, we talk about this outfield having to cover so much ground, but that first step from Springer was ideal and was a perfect step. He not only goes to the side, but he kind of three quarters his way, opens his hip, and goes and gets that pitch and makes it look very easy. Very well positioned, understanding what Thorne is trying to do with Michael A. Taylor. That's where we get with analytics man these players are so much smarter these teams are so much better. They, they kind of put you in positions where guys understand what's happening like if we look at Gurriel right now in left field he's got his stands wide open and, and you don't necessarily see that but there is a reasons for that is because they understand he's covering the line a little bit more and he's got to make sure that first step towards left center will be ready to go so maybe he's like he's look like he looks like he's playing the infield. Lopez to short and Bo will wait for it and make the play at first and end the inning. That's a good point though. He's really positioning himself to make a move towards center. We can do some teaching when we have time later. This was a quick one in the third. Still three per side.
Let's keep the creator spotlight going. A YouTube content creator featured in the live game commentary section. And today our spotlight shines on Foot Doctor Zach. Yes, a real life foot doctor, former college athlete, laying down reviews on athletic footwear. Over 52,000 subscribers, close to 8 million views. And the channel is only about two years old. Welcome, you know, Dr. Zach Thomas. I went to a doctor like that to try to get my feet you know, kind of aligned to help my knees and my hips and all that early on in my career, but... Did it work? Didn't, I didn't like it. Just didn't like it. My paws did not like it. Maybe you went to the wrong doc. <laughs> Visit Zach. I know. I'm, I'm like watching that. I'm like, man, I wish I knew him. <laughs> Zach, message us or something. Look at those Ooh, right there. Nice. The crab man. That's what we call him, the cry man. MJ Melendez. Rocket. Tapia rocket, but into the glove of Lopez. Good hitters line out. That was my slingo. Every time I would uh, <laughs> hit a line drive, somebody would say, good hitters line out. Good pitch there. Got a little baby change up right there. Kind of left it up. Tapio was all over it. We saw what he did last AB, 441 feet with a blast in the second. Started the scoring for Toronto. They've scored two more since. 3 0 to 3 3 here in the fourth. Ha! That's a good pitch down and away. There's not much he can do with that pitch, Gurriel. All he can do is take it and hopefully fight for the remainder of this at bat. Those are pitches, you know, as veteran hitters and good hitters, where they take those pitches. They, they take the strikes that they can't handle. The, the, the guys that just come up to the league, they, they swing at every strike. There's, you know, it's knowing your strength, knowing what you want to do, knowing what you want to do at the plate and your and, and your your go to's at the plate, especially 0 or 1 1 early in this count. Look for him to try to maybe slide his ways, his attention to that other part of the plate. Spinner, and that'll fall. That's just There's making an adjustment. That That's just making an adjustment from that first pitch, understanding what they were trying to do to him. They're going down and away on him, so he's just gliding his way over there and setting his sights to no pull, just absolutely using the other side of the field. Oppo single, Lourdes Guriel. Oh, man. A lot of bloops here at Kauffman Stadiums. You know, we talk about it's a hard place to hit home runs, but the outfielders play so, so deep that you get away with those. Inside to Matt Chapman. I mean, there's so much territory to cover as we're showing you some of it. It's a big ballpark. Ball was not leaving the yard in the first month, which can be discouraging for a ball club. Hey, let's finish up the first poll question of the day. We have a few more later, including YouTube player of the game. Let's start with how many AL East teams will make the postseason? Hmm. Three beats two. I'm surprised four didn't get more love. Yeah. I'm a three guy, but very surprised by that. Two? I, I don't I don't know about two. No, I don't know about two. So, uh, like, tell me who's not making the playoffs out of Yankees, Blue Jays, Tampa, Red Sox, Rays. Red, well, I, I think maybe people would think the Red Sox, but you know, they've been they've been playing so much better. Their starting pitching is so much better. Their back end of that bullpen is very good as well. And, and, and you know, I think the lineup is going to hit. Trevor Story has been uh, uh, as of late much better as well. And, and you know, let's not forget Alex Cora. You know, Alex Cora knows how to get his team to play. They, they, he's going to make a couple moves here and there and fix his team and they're going to be right in it. Two games over 500 at this point right now. We understand these teams are, are very good teams and, and they can do a lot of good things. But my point is for the one third of the YouTube population that just voted for only two potential teams making yeah. it out of the AL East. Hmm. Like you can maybe name one, but you can name two teams that are going to fall shy of the playoffs. Keep in mind, an extra team makes it this year compared to last year. Three wild cards these days. Chapman pop up. Oh, oh here you go. Us. Oh. That was the closest one all year for us. Yeah, I mean, you got to pay attention. You know who else is giving it a look? Dan Schulman, Pat Tabler. They're over there. Blue Jays broadcast. <laughs> we just gave him a heads up. <laughs> hey, there we are. I did not realize that. That's us. That's us. I need my glove. 
that's oh, a slow ouch. roller. Exactly. That is Foul so ball painful. Foul off the foot. Yeah. Oh, Look how man. far it went after fouling it uh, off himself. Captain America doesn't even wear any shield. That's what I used to call him. I'm like, man, how do you not wear anything? Captain what was his America. answer? I can't do it. Oof. Oh. The toes. That's going to hurt the next day or after the game. Once you take your cleat off, it starts throbbing a little bit. Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> it's going to be fun to walk tomorrow. Guriel singled. Now Chapman. 3 2. Oh, man. In the right. Serves it. Singles for the Jays. Back to back in the fourth. That's a really good piece of hitting right there going to the opposite field. Stay short with it, not try to do too much, especially after getting that two seamer in on his hands. And he's talking about it right now with the first base coach. But once again, he's staying nice and short with it, just taking that base hit, not trying to do too much. It, it just felt like he wanted to stay on the slider, got that pitch out over, and just threw his hands at it. Just a good piece by Matt Chapman. Peripherals like hard hit percentage back up for him this year, and some just weren't falling. Bit unlucky. But it's starting to turn around for Matt. This is Zach Collins, the You know, and I talked to him earlier before the game today, and I said, How do you feel? He says, you know, the hip situation that he had, he had hip surgery during 2020, and that was a struggle. It took him about a year and a half to feel better. Right now he's at that year and a half mark, and he certainly has has felt like it's his ha! best he's felt throughout his this whole timeline. But you know he had a really good re recovery process, and you know he was able to be in, so in South California, in, in California, the southern part of California, to get his rehab. And you know right now he's got that first step jump, which is ideal for him. And he's a very uh, kind of quick tension kind of guy where he needs that first step, and he surely has proven it. On three pitches, Zach Collins strikes out. He homered in the last inning. Yeah, they ate him up with sliders right there. Couldn't make the adjustment. Just a little too quick, but good pitches there by Brady. Yeah, nice pitch. Cabin Biggio up next. Two outs, two on in the fourth. I have two things to play catch up on if I can. This was from a while ago. I just wanted to pay it off. Dodger Film saying, liking my 11 6 Toronto prediction. <laughs> you got a ways to go, but we're only in the fourth. And that was when it was, I believe, a 3 0 game. Oh, man, good block right there. I got one more thing to sneak in there. You're going to like this because it's going to get busy. We have one more guest, and I think it's going to be a good game, too, that we're going to want to lock in on. One more time on the pitch for a sec. Can we do a shout out? One shout out. You know who I'm shouting out right now. Shout it out. Denise. Let's go. Put off. That's right. You and me are talking shop totally on the, the third plane or late last night. Yes. We said, look out, third or fourth inning. Partial season tickets here in KC. She said, I like to be. Behind third base to be able to kind of see into the dugout too and get a little inside action on what's going on, the reaction of the ball club. He likes to see the visiting crowd. She was a fan. She turned around right away and she started naming up players. How, how's this guy? How's that guy? She hears us talking about the Royals and the Blue Jays. She turns around. She's running through the roster. Oh, yeah. Give me the lowdown. <laughs> not here she's watching that's what she said she's like I'm not going to go I'm going to watch you today extra view on the video on YouTube we'll take it hitters count for Biggio and Brady Singer is past the 70 pitch mark uh, I would like Brady right here to throw a slider I know those a hitters count a slider is kind of the pitch right now to go to especially with two outs on the shift the hitter. Ah! He got the call. Thank you. <laughs> the thank you meters back from last yeah, week. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Called strike rate. Best in the biz. We just saw it. He does get favorable strike calls. He does. There must be an art to that. It's late life. It's life where it looks like a strike and then it's not. And it's also really good receiving catchers. Biggio to left and Benintendi chasing towards the line. He is there. 
covering the ground, making the catch, and retiring the side. So two left on board by Brady Singer. Royals and Blue Jays locked up at three, mid four. Three three in the fourth beautiful part of this ballpark in KC those fountains you're looking at them another amazing part of this city is a very special destination that you're going to hear more about right now as we send it over to Brett Dolan. Indeed Scott you think about the Negro League Baseball Museum in Kansas City and I've got Bob Kendrick with me the longtime president the best dressed man in the ballpark the most eloquent man Bob it's good to see you. Hey it's great to be here thanks so much for having me. You just got back from Cooperstown but you're going back this summer for a most special day when Buck O'Neill gets inducted finally into the Hall of Fame. What will that be like for you personally. Oh it, it's going to be very special. I'm sure it's going to be highly emotional. It was for me when we got the word that he had gotten in. I was overcome with emotion because I was reflecting back to at that time 15 years prior when he missed by one vote and now the verdict goes our way and you wish that you could celebrate with him. We wanted to high five chest bump hug our guy. We won't have that opportunity but you can rest assured that his spirit will be very much present as he would like to call as he would always call Cooperstown in the valley. When, when when that induction takes place on Sunday July 24th I can't wait uh, I am over the moon excited you reference 2006 when 17 Negro League individuals got inducted into the Hall of Fame but not Buck O'Neill how did he handle that disappointment a whole lot better than I did you know and it, it was I think one of Buck's finest moments in a career that was filled with great moments perhaps his finest moment came in defeat the way that he handled the disappointment of not getting in to the point where he was encouraging all of us to not be angry to not be bitter not to express any ill oh, will up. toward anyone who had something to do with that decision and so I reflect on the day that I had to tell him and subsequently we had all these folks gather at the museum and he walks in that room and he literally wraps his arms ah. around the entire room and says it's okay instead of us consoling him he's consoling all of us in one of the most amazing displays of strength of character that I've ever witnessed. But we all lost so much in 2020 with the pandemic it was going to be the 100th anniversary celebrating the Negro Leagues and that really took a hit. How have you tried to overcome that loss to keep this message and this museum on the forefront of baseball people's mind. Well it tests your metal. There's no question about it. I, I was speaking earlier this morning and I I was telling the group that as a steward of this story you know you're not allowed to wallow in self pity. But man I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't doing some wallowing <laughs> after all of these wonderful plans that we had for this epic celebration 100 years of the birth of the Negro Leagues we believe one of the most significant things to happen not in baseball history but many would say in American history yes. and, and we were seeing this fall by the wayside but at some point you have to dig down and grasp that resilient spirit 
that drove the Negro Leagues. They never cried about the social adversity. They went out and did something about it. You won't let me play with you in the major leagues? Okay, I create my own. And so you know you got to summon that from somewhere. And we were able to somehow turn a spirit of doom and gloom to renewed hope and optimism. And we've been building on that ever since. And now with Buck O'Neill going in the Hall of Fame, we uh -huh. really have an opportunity to do some of the things that we were planned to do in 2020 that we'll be able to do now yep. that will hopefully drive Buck's Museum into an even heightened position in the future. One more for Bob Kendrick as Ben Intendi takes a walk. We're in Kansas City. Satchel Page was a Kansas City monarch. What's your favorite Satchel story? Oh, there are so many of them, but one that I really enjoyed telling here recently was a story between he and the great Whitey Herzog. And so Bill Veck had brought Satchel back to pitch for the Miami Marlins in Triple A. The year is 1956. Now, if you believe that Satchel was born in 1906, <laughs> this would make him 50 years old. Well, the old man is pitching highly effectively at that time. And so they're playing in Rochester, New York. And, and so a young Whitey Herzog was on that Miami Marlins team. He's an outfielder. And so they're in Rochester. The Rochester team has a knot hole in the outfield wall. And they had a promotion that said, if any batter hits the ball on the fly through the hole, you could win $100,000. But it was virtually impossible. But Mr. Herzog says he's out in the outfield jogging. He decides to take some baseballs with him because he wants to see if the ball would actually fit in the hole. Where there's just enough circumference to squeeze that ball through the hole. He goes and gets satchel. He said, well, Satchel, you know, you're always bragging about how great your control is and how you could throw baseball over a chewing gum wrapper, which was the honest guy's truth. The catcher would sit the chewing gum wrapper on top of home plate, Satchel right over the top of that chewing gum wrapper. He says, I bet you a bottle of old granddad bourbon that you can't throw a baseball through that knot hole. Well, Satchel had a nickname for everyone. His nickname, famous, famously for Mr. Herzog, was Wild Child. He said, Wild Child, will the ball fit? Well, Mr. Herzog showed me just enough circumference to squeeze that ball through the hole. He says, Wild Child, I'll take that bet. Mr. Herzog says he steps off 60 feet, 6 inches, puts down the pitching rubber. He's going to give the old man three tries to throw that ball through the knot hole. He says, Satchel takes the baseball like a hunter is looking through the telescope of his rifle and he measures and the first pitch goes in the hole but spins back out he says he's in freaking disbelief but he's saying to himself there's no way he can get any closer the very next pitch right through the hole satchel reaches down picks up the bottle of bourbon and says wild child I'll take that. And sun is on off into the sunset. Oh, there will never be another Satchel Page. No, there will not. There will never be another Bob Kendrick. Bob, thanks for stopping by. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Wonderful conversation, Scott. Thanks for allowing us to interrupt a little bit in that inning. No, we appreciate it, Brad. It was wild. And that was great. This inning's getting wild, too, as Salvador Perez drives home Andrew Benintendi. And did you think that Bobby Wood Jr. was going to start flying? Oh, man, I, he had it. He had it. But, you know, if that, if that play... I think if there's two outs, it's a little bit of a different feel. You sure. can be a little bit more aggressive, but right now you just don't want to make the second out at home plate. But yeah, no question about it. He, he had it. He was thinking about it for sure, especially after that stolen base. So the inning started with Merrifield bouncing out, and then Ben Intendi walked with, with a single, and Perez with the RBI knock. Here goes Witt. He was smelling it right there. And that ball in right field from Tapia was bobbled. That's an E9 off the single. That ends up moving runners over. And then Salvi almost brought home two. Yeah, and that Blue Jays uh, bullpen right now is hot, and they're getting ready, and they're getting ready quickly. Reaching for one, and the play is to second for one, back to first, not in time, and another run comes through. Witt Jr. does score to make it 5-3 Kansas City as Melendez bounces out. Fielder's choice, RBI for the rookie, driving in his rookie buddy. Man, he can get 
down that line. Can he for a catcher? He's a catcher, but he can play outfield. He's an athlete. That's where you have these athletes for the Royals. This is why the future is so bright because you have all these guys that can play everywhere. And when you find a, a, a catcher like this who can play the outfield and be this, this could not only uh, in, the, in that specific position uh, behind the plate, he's as special as he gets, man. That's a good play right there. But for Bichette right there, there's not much he can do. I mean, the defensive side, everybody did the right thing, but there's just too much athleticism and too much speed on the bases. We can measure the speed with stat casts. That was above average running in all of baseball, which you don't often say about a catcher. Yeah, and you know what? I, I think this is the way the Royals are building their, their roster into a bunch of athletic guys. And we were talking earlier with Pete Grafol today, and that's what he was talking about, man. And what I'm seeing here is you know, good pitching, good athleticism, good defense will win you ball games. And the way the game is going right now, especially next year, when there's not going to be a shift, you're going to need all these athletes to to kind of show out and, and do the things they need to do. And they'll certainly use MJ Melendez not only behind the plate, but everywhere else on this diamond. And that helps with this ballpark too. Plays big. Yep. Has that see, can run. Yeah, and if we see Gurriel right now in left field. It, it, you know the, the, the outfield shaded completely to right center but Gurriel in left field he's not shaded with him he's actually at a different position if we see his legs the way he sets up oh. and off to oh, third second. base is available oh he's out and toast is Melendez trying to steal a bag and really take it to the next level as a catcher but a nice throw and the tag is on. Zach Collins having a great day behind the plate for Toronto. Tough pitch to grab and fire pop time on point for the third out in the fourth. A two run fourth for the Kansas City Bats. They vault back in front of Toronto 5 3. And our next poll question on YouTube is live. Biggest need moving forward for the Blue Jays as we get to the trade deadline. Not too far away at this point. Already in June. Quality starter, swing and miss reliever, or lefty power bat? Vote now. Yonder is pondering. I can see. Turn. I'm going to go with the middle swing and miss reliever. Okay. Uh, I think when you get to the uh, postseason, you always need that stopper, right? It's the one way to go when when you need a, a, a big inning, a big zero on the board after you score a run. Those those are usually the, the most go to, and there's going to be a lot of them. Top of the order in Springer. Ha! No strike one. Yeah, I'm with you. Because I think any serious playoff team just needs to load up in their bullpen. Even if you think it's good, it, it can only get better, right? Yeah. I Where agree. at one point, I mean, there were calls, and there probably still are from some of the Blue Jays fans watching. Yeah. Just 
get a little more left-handed in this lineup. It's, it definitely would it help hurt. to some extent, although it's not like they're crushing left-handed pitching this year. They're handling righties. And I just look Ooh. at the offense in general, and I'm like, this offense can win a World Series. Yeah. And the defense plays too, right? And, and yeah. you know, I, I think they have an abundance of catchers. I think that's kind of that chip where all these teams are going to be calling and saying, oh man, that's a beautiful way to beat the shift. Springer right there. gets one through. I mean, everyone's beating the shift all day today. Yeah. It's just one of those days. Shift's taking a beating. Not trying to do too much right there. Understanding that there's a huge hole. So, so much easier said than done. But yeah. being able to do that right there is, it says, hey, I'm going to get beat right here. And I'm going to try to just shoot it the other way for a knock, especially with two strikes. Beautiful piece of hitting right there. And I told him earlier today, hey, come here, man. Come get all your hits. Yeah, you were very friendly with George, just handing him over the hits that I guess you don't need. Yeah. He, he was a big, uh, <laughs> he used to get to first base, and I used to kind of like touch his shoulder and be like, all right, man. Thanks. All right, let me get a couple of those hits, and I'll <laughs> just touch him. He hated it. So now I see him in the clubhouse. So, and I said, "All right, man. Listen, man. I, I, I'm sure I still got some hits in me, but you can take them all. I'm giving them all to you, buddy." And you can tell he got that bat, man. He got his bat, and he was just touching me all over. <laughs> He's like, "All right, I'll, I'll take them. I'll take them all." He's probably thinking about you right now. Absolutely. We're just like, <laughs> thank you, Yonder, for that single through the right side, Bo Bichette. With a base hit back in the 30s, one for two today. Four opposite field hits for Toronto so far this afternoon. And that is ball two to Bo. And we have Brett with some relevant news to this poll question conversation. Brett? Well, indeed, guys. And, and the Toronto Blue Jays, like many other teams, dealing with a few injuries. And Yun Jin Ryu is one of those pitchers that we're not sure how long he might be out, but it could be a very long time. He's had a forearm strain, elbow inflammation. He's dealt with both all season. Of course, that's a concern and, and a trend that I know the Blue Jays would like to alleviate. They do have some depth in their pitching rotation, but that is one of those individuals that I'm sure they were really counting upon for a full season and a contribution. Yeah, and he is going to receive another opinion from Dr. Neil Elitrash on Thursday talking about Ryu and that elbow forearm kind of issue. That that scares me. And I think many Blue Jays fans as well. Inside out action from Bo, and it's two and two. But here's the top three in the rotation, and it's a good one. We didn't mention starter because I think in the postseason, I mean, this plays. Gossman, Manoa, Barrios, sign me up. I know Jose's been a little bit inconsistent, but ooh, coming off a big swing and miss start over the weekend. And yeah. These guys are serious. Yeah, they, they certainly need Ryu to get back, and especially with the postseason experience he's had as, with the Dodgers. He, he's one of those guys who's had pretty much the most experience in the postseason, so they certainly need him. Bichette strikes out five total K's this afternoon for Brady Singer He's not a big swing and miss pitcher one strikeout per inning exactly so far through five. Yeah but this inning right here this is a big big inning for Singer because the, the reasons for that is you know their rotation hasn't gone deep at all in games this year I mean they're 23rd best in, in rotation and, and starters going deep into this ball game. So this inning is kind of like one of those make it or break it deal if he's, if he's going to have a good start or not. So far, he's been phenomenal waving his way through this lineup. Guerrero Ooh, takes right. a strike, yeah. He was guessing right there. You don't see Guerrero taking, taking pitches like that often. You know, this Kansas City Royals ball club during their rebuild back from the championship team about seven years ago, in 2018, they drafted four college pitchers in the first round. Singer is one of them, 18th overall. And they're still looking for a guy to emerge towards the top of the rotation. Maybe that's Asa Lacey, who's still in the minor leagues, a 2020 first rounder for KC. It's been the part of the Royals that's still working its way through. It's like, who's going to be the guy? And preferably, you want two or three. Oh, like yeah. With Toronto. I mean, no we're question. talking about at least Gossman and Manoa, if not Barrios, handling that moniker. Wow. Absolutely. You always, you know, I used to talk to AJ Perler, the GM for the Padres, and I used to ask him, going into a year, how many pitchers do you need? 
and they used to say 11 to 12 pitchers to take you through a whole year. And, and you need three or four guys that are going to give you quality starts time after time. And if you have those guys at the end of the year, you're usually at the 90, 95 range in wins. Guerrero punished that one, but it's Benintendi in the right spot for out number two. All right, so let's roll out that draft class from 2018. It was Singer, and Coar, Daniel Lynch, who's up with the big league squad, Chris Bubich, and Jonathan Keasley drafted later on there, as you can see. But a lot of college pitchers in the early rounds for the Royals still developing. There's nothing better than experience, and right now, Brady Singer's getting that, and you know he's going to continue to get better. There, there's definitely high hopes for him. I, I know this organization really thinks highly of him. He's got good stuff. Yeah, I remember when he got drafted. They brought him here to the uh, stadium, and, and I was actually here on the field. Uh, we were playing the Royals, and I remember seeing him, big kid. Lively arm, heads up. It was ump mask shot, Sean Ooh. Barber. Yeah. Wonder if his if his uh, face mask has the, those those springs on the side where all these these catchers are doing it right now. For a little give. Yeah, for a little bounces give. Off the mask. It's kind of an old school mask he's got on. Now, do you ever take one of those off the mask off the face? I am. Not an umpire game game. yonder. <laughs> I am. What? Well, maybe you caught when you were wee little. I, I did one game okay. in the league just to feel what it was like, and I, I said, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm good. I said, I got it. Thank you. I'm a lefty. I'll go back to first base. <laughs> I remember, I remember uh, taking a couple of those during my, my, I guess, wants of catchers. People wanted me to be a catcher, and I took a couple of those. My ears started ringing, and I said, yeah, I've had enough of this. <laughs> you so you tried? Oh, I tried. High school or before that? High school. High school, wow. Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan of catch. No. Look at MJ Melendez. Look where he's standing right there. That's that's understanding everything that's going on before you call a pitch. Coming in on him. Hmm. Popped up. Who's got it? Three converging. Santana watches it fall. And Springer will hold up at third. It is quite the seeing eye single for Santiago a, Espinal. Wow. We've seen that a one lot of bloops for a while. Yeah, we've I'm seen like, a is lot someone of bloops. getting there? Yeah, we've seen a lot of bloops all day today. And those are things that you talk about early on in your scouting report, understanding that, hey, infielders have to understand what's happening and how far your outfielders are at because. This is a no man's land understanding that there was a shift and, and Nicky Lopez was too far away from that play. I was hitting that triangle circle but that little peak right there could have been the difference if, if Santana understands that in, there's no peak he probably catches that. But once again it, it, it's you know bloop after bloop and, and here you are in a stressful situation top of the fifth first and third two outs he's got to make some pitches especially to Tapia who has hit the ball hard twice. Pitching coach Cal Eldred out there. Your Springer. Yeah, not much you can do there. First and third, and then having one of your hot hitters for the day with two outs. Wasn't running as hard as maybe I would have liked. But nonetheless, now there's a lot of holes out there for Tapia in first and third. and. It'll be interesting how uh, Mr. Mr. Brady goes after Tapia. This guy's locked in right now. He lined out to second in the fourth, but it was a laser. So was his homer in the second. If we get a beat, we'll show it to you. There's strike one. Ah! That's a good pitch right there. Getting ahead right there, especially after a mound visit. Now he can start wiggling his way through this at bat and hopefully get Tapia's aggressive to to 
ground it out. Yeah, two strikes on him. Can we do it? Let's do it. Statcast powered by Google Cloud. 106 off the bat, second longest home run of his career. Last year he went 442, and I believe that was a course field. Ooh. So, tougher ballpark to really let it rip. And he did to the fountain splash down. It's a wet baseball. Oh, that plays. All the drip for Ramel Tapia. That's what he does, though. He fouls Bad. out pitches. Yep, yep, he, yep. He's tough to strike out. You're right. He certainly can do that. His hand acronation is one of the best. It's been clutch since early May, as you can see. Somewhere. This baseball is like a penny at there. the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> do people still throw pennies? Do people have pennies? Will Popper again, who's gonna get it? And the center fielder, Michael A. Taylor, is there in stride. Hey, you never know at this point. Blue Jays can't score any here in the fifth. It's a 5-3 contest. Bring your friends to the one spot with all of your favorite free MLB games. Play Beat the Street, Quick Pick, and more. Visit MLB.com slash play and download MLB Play today. MLB.tv is now at a discounted price of $114.99. Watch all out-of-market regular season games live or on demand, plus MLB Big Inning. Visit MLB.tv for details. There's a lot of action going on in the booth at the moment. Here we are. There's water bottles flying, and most importantly, there is barbecue being served. Oh, man. Made I mean, game. we talked about this, and I mean, look at this. Obviously, the crew's going to deliver, and you want to shout out? Q39. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I used to get Q39 for all the guys when I came here. Mm -hmm. Loved the wingtips, loved, loved it all. So, I mean, this is how you do it, right? This is Should what better way to get here. come to Kansas City and, yeah, just, and just dig in. Oh man, that's one I mean, bite from at, yonder. The colors so what are we right? working with here? Do we know? A little brisket, on the menu? A little brisket sandwich. Brisket. This is barbecue wing right here. I'm I'm digging in because this is lovely. Some well caramelized seasoned, onions. Well sauced wing action. Let's see. Big bite for us. Thank you. Mm, 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 mm. Brett, you're needed upstairs. We have 12 more to go containers and napkins. Important. <laughs> it's cool. We're still calling the game too. That's right. <laughs> Bottom five Royals coming off a two run fourth. Santana, Rivera, and Taylor do up in their half of the fifth. Do you want me to handle this inning? I mean, I can. <laughs> or at least the half. I mean, I'm when, here for you. I, here. I want you That's to enjoy this. That's a good team right there, man. Obviously. That's I how you do you. it. I want you to enjoy this experience. Only in eat KC warm, potentially right. once this season. Ooh. Two and two. This is Trevor Richards working his second inning. Gave up those two runs back in the fourth taking over. He's a great story, too. He's 
undrafted out of D2 Drury University and eventually working his way through independent league ball and kind of rediscovered by a scout after. Signed for no money. Yeah, he signed for zero dollars. They paid his $3,000 buyout in the independent leagues. Woo! Look at that bite. That's what instant replay That's is all about. Right there. Big bite, but but clean bite. He got all of that bite. Yeah. That's clean up hitter, and you get all of it every time. Sweet spot on the bat right there. Uh-huh. That was fantastic, though. Mm -hmm. And we're still here. Santana stays alive. Yeah, there's no better place. I mean, you know, come here to Kansas City. There's so many places to eat barbecue. I mean, I'm not sure. Are you a barbecue guy, Scott? I love barbecue. Yeah, man. I mean, you got Oklahoma Joe's, Jack Stacks, Q39, Arthur Bryan's, Gates Barbecues. I mean, we need help. Santana chops one into right center in a two hit day. He reaches for the third time this afternoon. Walk, single, single for Santana. Here we go. That's an absolute rocket. There's two hits right there. And he had two hits when we saw him just a week ago, last Wednesday on YouTube. Oh, we have friends. We have help now. Also in the YouTube chat, Mr. C. Dot at Brisket. Okay. Looks, There's that guy right here. Those wings. He look wasn't going to miss out. He said, Oh, good stuff. Dusty <laughs> Crab, KC barbecue, best thing about KC for sure. So good. Oh, there's so And like I blinked, places. I called for Brett. Yeah. And I he's mean, here. Normally that's a 10 minute trip from that camera well. <laughs> Did you fly here? He flew no, he was teleported. Running back. 65 seconds. <laughs> Sprint speed, oh, best in the biz. I, hey, we told him in the morning, hey, we we're going to get some barbecue. Yeah. We got to get some barbecue in here, man. I mean, he I said, oh, I'm in. I hear Bobby Wood's really good, you know, home to first, but I think I could top him right there. <laughs> there was a prize at the end of first base. White shirt be darned. I'm going after it, boys. And I got you a nice little napkin. Good stuff. Thank uh, you. Great. Emmanuel Rivera with Santana on. They're going to check him. That was great. Yeah. That was first step quickness from Brett. Rivera with a single that drove home two in the first. Struck out on three pitches in third. Had a little combo with his manager Mike Matheny earlier today. As Rivera continues to improve in the big leagues, he said quality ABs, even though sometimes yep. it's not falling for him lately, and big improvement on defense. Yeah, well, we saw it early on today with that line drive diving catch. Every day is a learning curve, right? Every day you, you it's so hard as a rookie or even a second year player guy to to adjust in this league. It's it's an adjustment period every single day. The pitchers are trying to adjust. The analytic department is trying to adjust. Every day is a mission, but every day is a mission with the right attitude to get better. And very late on the off speed stuff from Richards. That's the change up that a scout said when he discovered him. 80 grade in my mind. Yeah. This guy needs to be in the bigs. Got a good changeup. He's got a good slider. He was caught off in between right there. Whew. Not much you can do with that. That's just going back to the dug and understanding, hey, I was just fooled. Runners moving and the swing to right center off the bat of Michael A. Taylor carrying towards the wall. It'll punch off the wall. Santana being waved around. Here he comes. No throw. RBI double for Michael A. Taylor. Make it 6 3 Royals. Oh, Michael A. Taylor right there with a slider up in the zone. Did not miss it. First pitch swinging. Beautiful swing right there. Not trying to do too much. Doesn't spin out of it. Stays real tight with his backside and just stays through it. That's a beautiful thing to see right there. Simplifying his swing and his approach. Kind of sitting on that slider. That's the right way to do it. That's the right way to hit a slider. Letting it get as deep as possible and driving it to the opposite field. And look at Santana run. Who said a veteran can't run? <laughs> oh, he sees it. He smells it. He goes, I'm going. I'm scoring for my friends. I'm going. He watched it for a while. Uniform's dirty today, and he's in. 
KC doubling up Toronto 6 3. Richards is out. New pitcher next. Offense is flowing today for Kansas City. They were shut out in back to back games to start this series against the Blue Jays. Six runs on the board. We're in the fifth. Trevor Richards replaced by Matt Gage making his second career appearance. A scoreless two strikeout day on Monday against Kansas City. First pitch misses up to Nicky Lopez with a man on second. That's Michael A. Taylor who drove home Carlos Santana. Yeah, Mike. Matt Gage right here with a cutter four seam change repertoire. Loves to use that cutter though. Look for him to kind of bury down that down and away cutter to the lefties. Another great story too. 29 years old. 10th round pick out of Siena College. At the Giants back in 2014 and ended up out of baseball. Well out of the big leagues and out of the. Pro organizations over to Mexico. 2020 indie ball. Got a short arm delivery. That's what fixed it. That's what it he is was, right there. He was like, I'll do whatever it takes to get back. He was watching video of Lucas Giolito. Yeah. That really resurrected Giolito's career as a big time prospect in the national system. Moves over to the White Sox. Had some tough times in the bigs. Now, obviously, he's great. Gage followed a similar pattern. And the velocity shot up. Yeah, averaging 93.2 miles an hour on that fastball. That's for me the difference right now in the big leagues. Is you're getting these specialist specialist lefties throwing 94, 95 miles an hour. Your favorite. <laughs> you know, with really good stuff, with secondary stuff like cutters and sliders that are just unhittable to hit. You know, usually these lefties come in and they're on the first base side of the mound too, which is even harder. You know, you're watching the ball come out of the, their hand from literally behind your back. It's not a fun at bat whatsoever. That was ours if the net's not. Oh, there. it was coming. That was coming. That was on plane. Brett. With some water, some napkins. He's back downstairs. He's got more for us on Nicky Lopez. You look great. All cleaned up after a really, really deep dive into the barbecue, Brett. <laughs> well, it'll be a deeper dive once this game comes to an end, although it might be somewhat cold. You know, you think about Nicky Lopez, guys. He had a great year last season. The first Royal shortstop to hit over 300. His war was six with what he did defensively. It has not gone swimmingly this year. He hasn't had his arbitration hearing yet. It comes up in a week. He's admitted it's been on his mind. It'll be a relief. And yonder, it's one of those uniquenesses, I guess, of 2022. But I would not want to have a hearing while still fretting a bit about this season and just all what would wear on my mind. Yeah, it's definitely a very stressful situation for a player. It's a it's a 
it's a situation where you usually take care of those things in the offseason when given the lockout. This is what's happening. This is what you have to deal with as a player. And look, it was done in, in previous lockouts where they had arbitration cases like this throughout the year. But no question about it, bro. I mean, it is, it, it's a situation where you kind of want to just get over it. And that way you can just solely focus on baseball. But coming to the ballpark every day, understanding that you got to do your job is hard enough. Even even with that being said, you still got to go to an arbitration. And that's not fun at all for anybody. An in-season arbitration. Dude, I'm busy. Yeah, I'm busy. Let's talk later. I'm trying to get some hits. I'm trying to win some games. Nice day for the Royals offense. Bats getting going from the jump. They knocked out Yusei Kikuchi in the first inning. Just two outs recorded. His pitch count was soaring. That's a good take right there. You can tell that wit. It's just searching for something up in the zone. Anything down, it's, it's an automatic take. As he, as we know, Gage throws those cutters and those sliders that we see right there in a slider down, and it was off the hand, and Witt just completely took it. And now rips deep to left. Witt Merrifield has oh, caught. Catch! Lourdes Gurriel Jr. runs it down. What a catch. Puts his head down, understands where the wall's at. That ball's hit. I, I thought he was playing kind of shallow. Puts his head down, understands he's got some room to go, and man, saving runs right there. Huge play for the Blue Jays. What a fantastic job. He, he was thinking about scoring from first base and had to get on his horse. Cutting a miss from Ben Intendi. You know, we talk about Guerrero and, and the way he sets up in left field. You know, he kind of sets up with, with a feel of understanding the ball is going to be hit to left center. He's got really good feet. Remember, this is a guy who played in Cuba and played middle infield in Cuba. So he oh. under, he's aware of how to play. He's aware of how to have really good feet out there, but he would take a, a kind of a back shot on and, the, and he, the way he sets up his feet is very interesting because he kind of sets up where he's determined where to go. But no question about it right there. We can see that he made just an incredible play in left field. Ben Intendi trying to he protect went. himself. Yeah, he went. You know, Lourdes Curiel as really improved his outfield play. Yeah. It's funny too because Gurriel is up where Springer is kind of playing a little bit more deeper. That's how he sets up right there as the pitch is coming. Little check. Excuse me swing for Chapman to glove and that's going to do it for the fifth. Whit Merrifield thinking damage but Nice play by Gurriel. Still a run comes across for KC to make it 6-3 after five.
Hey, fans watching have their choice of listening experience. You can click the gear icon. We're going to run it through for you right now. And your player, choose audio track, select either primary broadcast or you can listen to the Royals radio call today, each available on your favorite device. Click. We're running through it for you. Scott Braun, Yonder, Alonzo, Brett Dolan. You'd be missing barbecue interviews. The whole deal on YouTube. Don't leave us. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. last half inning was headed straight to the fence. Bullseye finds the baseball. That was that was flying off the bat for Merrifield, but the wind moving from left to right here at Kauffman Stadium coming in from the north because it's flying much more to right than it is to left, and we just learned that. But also Gurriel does a nice job tracking it down. Yeah, it took about 25 to 30 steps to get to that. He was yeah. playing very shallow, but you know what happens? You make a good play on defense, and now you're up to bat. Heads up. I'll wake you up. It's a hey, new pitcher. Welcome to the ball game pitch. Dylan Coleman. Six five two thirty pounder righty and that is sky. Santana dancing. Got it. Oh the winds just making all sorts yeah. of stuff huh? Looks like a fun one today. Yeah, he got away he got away with that right there. He wanted it. Guriel just missed it put a good swing but he understood right away. He had popped it up but Man, he wants that fastball. Those are the worst. When you know you get a good pitch to hit, you don't necessarily get that many in the big leagues or especially in an at bat. But when you get one like that, you want it back. It's like you feel like you say it all the time, but the hair is incredible. <laughs> For anyone that's new watching worldwide on YouTube, like we'll get an international audience that's like, okay, baseball, I see you show hair. I think Coleman, you know, really good fastball, 97, 98. But the, the slider, I think, is my go-to for him. He, he's got a really good slider. You know, opponents are hitting 079 off of it. So There's a guy you understand that he's coming right at you with that heater, and as a hitter, you want to go make sure you're aggressive and out in front on him. Missed downstairs. He was a punch out machine in the minor leagues last year Coleman with 93 K's 57 and two thirds that's 14 and a half strikeouts per nine that's an electric mark in the minor leagues. Ha! Cruz loving the hair. Ready this this was what made it stand out for me too. It's like, wait what have you been hiding under that? Uh, what, what, what's, that, working what's, too. That, what's that? What's that? What's that animal called? In uh, that has those spiky hairs. The porcupine. Porcupine. That's yeah. what it is. It's really like porcupine hair. Right? I don't want to touch it. I'm gonna get cut. <laughs> Look at that. What like do? If I touch it, it's like. You know, sometimes with, with a guy that's got, you know, great hair, it's it's flow. Like I, I feel like you need a better word than flow. All four. All four to Chapman. We'll count walk. One out base runner for the Jays. Here comes Zach Collins. Home run in his pocket. It was his fourth of the season. Back in the third. And a YouTube creator who joins us in the chat pretty often on days like this. Zach Hampel. Got it. That's what he's known for. <laughs> Finds baseballs in different ballparks. Tours, reviews, the whole thing. But Zach is an expert at catching foul balls and home runs. And he was there. Well, last half bat for Zach Collins. They, they threw him three sliders in a row. Right now they started him off with a heater. He took that heater in, in, in the second inning for a homer, but there he is. Maybe he can catch another one. It's probably finding out that he was just displayed on YouTube with his friends. Yeah. Zach Hamp, expert at positioning himself. When we talk about outfield positioning. He positions himself. There's got to be an art to that. Oh, there is. Right. You can watch yeah. plenty of videos about it. He's the pro. Two fastballs to Collins, and now 
Oh, pitch gets away. Easy bag for Chapman. That was the slider. Just took his eyes off of it right there. A little too much. And that usually happens when a left hander is up. You, you know, you, you don't really see a, the runner at first as much, so you kind of tend to peak too early. That's just what happened right there to MJ Melendez. Pass ball. Intrigue here, they'll challenge him. If Coleman would challenge Zach Collins with a heater. And passed him, but it's Witt standing right around short to retire Collins. Two outs, Chapman to third on the ground out. Poll results. Toronto needs a quality starter. Close with swing and miss reliever, which was our pick. Yeah. Lefty power bat finishes third, especially as they're watching the offense swing the bats lately. But quality starter, maybe a bit scared off by the Ryu injury news, and maybe some listening to your wise words about how many starting pitchers you need to get through a season. And we do have to keep in mind Indeed. the AL East is ridiculously competitive. Fair. It's a tough division. Uh, it's tough. Toughest in the game for yeah. years now, in my mind. Yeah, it's very tough. You know, they. There's a lot of really good teams in the essence of they do everything well. You know, they, they win at home, they win on the road, they can pitch, they can play defense. They have really good closers at the end of the ball games to finish out games. I mean, look, it's going to be an absolute race. It's, it's going to be a fight all the way till September, but man, it's going to be a lot of fun. Stacked ball clubs. Indeed. I mean, the Jays are on a nice run right now. They've won 11 of their last 13, but the Yankees are pretty much keeping pace. They're still seven games ahead. That's to center. Breaking back now in is Taylor. Catch on the move, and the inning is over. Nothing comes across for Toronto in the top of the sixth. Chapman stranded at third. will hit the bottom half on YouTube. When we get closer to the end of this ball game, we continue the tradition. You have the power to choose the YouTube player of the game. They get the trophy name engraved post game interview. So stay tuned at the end of this one to vote. We'll open up that poll later on. The hardware has strength to it. You need to be strong to hold up the YouTube player of the game trophy. We'll do that later. We have one more poll question before we get there. And we have a bottom of the sixth to work through. Scott Braun, Yonder, Alonzo, Brett Dolan having fun on a beautiful weather day. Oh, man. Couldn't be better. I'm in for this. How about we this guy? We this a little bit. Two for two, Bobby Witt Jr. and Adam Simber. The submariner going to come in. Fastball, slider, change. Nice marks for Simber this year, the 31-year-old out of Portland, Oregon.
ex teammate. You played with him? Yeah. Probably not a fun at bat based on the low arm angle, and it's a very different look. You want him for righties because how are you seeing the baseball? Pretty late. Late and quirky, and it's all arms and legs, and it's just a, a unusual way of, of hitting against somebody. You don't necessarily, there's not too many of them out in the league. Doesn't missed. throw us that hard. Yep. But, you know, it's so quirky that it's hard to pick up. You know, that 85, even though you see that you know, as a hitter, you're still seeing it very, very late. Down Broadway. Bobby Witt is two for two, along with a walk today. He showed you he was in a two for 34 skid. Welcome back. And that's a roller for Bichette. And I have to go quickly, and it is in time. Just barely, nice stretch over there oh, at first man. by Biggio, too. Bobby Witt Jr. is one of the top 10 fastest players in the league. Oh man, he was getting absolutely down the line. He smelled a hit. And Bichette knew it. Look at him get off the line right there. He's smiling and he's smelling it all the way. Ooh, he man. stumbled that out of the is, gate. That is speed. Uh, and, and, and Bo knew it too. That's why he got rid of it so quick. They might surprise that he challenged this. No. Look at that. Just flick. a good play. He just flicked it over. That is some wheels right there. Just a slight stumble that we saw from Witt Jr. out of the gate. Otherwise, that could have been he's the difference. There. Yes, it was. We've seen Bo make some really good plays today. Plays that kind of go unnoticed, but that's what a good shortstop does. Not necessarily do you make a play diving for a ball, but but something like that as just getting it out. Yeah, by a hair. Barely. That stumble, man. That stumble caused him. Salvi the other way. Drifting foul. Struck out in his first two ABs and then RBI single in the fourth. Let's talk Salvi with Brett. Well, guys, Salvi homered on Saturday and Sunday. Prior to that, he had one home run over his last 28 games. And you go back to May, his OPS, Scott, was 463. That's 202nd out of 205 players with enough at-bats. He led the matrix in homers at RBIs last year. Now, that grade two thumb strain has not helped. Grade three requires surgery. But if the Royals are to win more games going forward, a healthier Salvador Perez has to be part of that equation. I'm with you, and it's just, it's tough to keep a catcher close to 100%. I mean, it's never the case with any player, but you take a beating at that position. Yeah, health is key right there. I mean, look at him right there. He just looked at that thumb as, as he made that swing. Still affecting him in your mind, right? The thumb still affecting him. Oh, yeah, no yeah. question about it. He, he just took a swing right now. And, and you can tell it, it bothered him. You know, he's asking for time right now. You know, his his thumb is barking right now. Took a swing the prior to that pitch, and you can just tell. I mean, he looks at his thumb, and he's like, oh, that, that stung right there. And it's tough because you're dealing with it every day, man. You're, you're, you're taking early on when you get to the field, swings to get right. You understand that you may be struggling, but you're not 100%. You certainly need your hands. Your hands are very, very important in a swing. But when you're dealing with that on a consistent basis, it's just very hard to stay consistent. Yeah, we showed you that swing that landed him on the injured list. I mean, he's got some different types of stuff to to alleviate that. You know, where you put a, a lizard skin on the top of uh, your thumb, you, you, you're covered completely on that thumb right there as well. But it's a grind. It's an everyday grind, everyday battle. But no question about it, this guy is a—he's—he's uh, he's going to go out there and give it everything he's got. Toppy in the corner, still going. It's off the wall. There's the carry to right field. Wind is blowing. He's got to go. He's got to be third. He is there, head first with a one-out triple. 
that ball just kept going and going and going. He barreled it, but it just kept going and going and going. The ball was flying out to right like we talked about it. Really nice piece of hitting right there by Salvi. Staying through that baseball, letting that baseball get deep. Once it hits the wall, it's off to the races. Look at Salvi go. 11th career triple, his first since 2017. <laughs> Tell me about Tapia out there and right. Did it go further than he thought, or was he taking oh, him a little bit? No, I, I think he understood that he was, you know, somewhat camp. But that ball, once it gets over the stadium here, it, it just goes. It gets a jet stream, and it just keeps going. Only to right, as we saw, We've seen a couple times today. There's the last triple for Salvi now, 90 feet away from scoring the seventh run of the day for Kansas City. If MJ Melendez can at least drive one deep enough. Oh, oh and he pulls it, but he hooked it. Foul at the distance. All right, this is real time. Running it back. Salvi, go, go. He thought he got Salve, it. Go. He thought he was going to be out. <laughs> wow. There he goes. He was chilling to first because he yeah. thought he's flying out. Yeah, this, it doesn't get any easier now for Simbra as you're facing some lefties in MJ Melendez and on deck at Santana. But right now, if you're a lefty, you're trying to see this ball up and you're trying to let it get as deep as possible. Back there, that's a good that's a good pitch to swing at. He just missed it. You don't want to do too much either, with it either. Obviously, there's a shift going on, so they're playing him like he's going to hit a ground ball to the right side. But you, if you're if you're the hitter, understanding that you got to see the ball as deep as possible. Super shift. Bichette Espinal Biggio right side. Chapman on his own. Melendez strikes out. First strikeout for Adam Simber. Up below the baseball. Now a switch hitter, so this will be a nicer angle for Carlos Santana. Yeah, it's in that bat right there where he had two strikes. He was just looking for something soft. Kind of over overthinking right there a little bit. And got the lefty. Simber much better against right-handed hitters. So again, ha! Thank you. another batter from. The other side of the box. The two righties actually handled handled Simber pretty well with yeah. bang bang play at first base and then Salvi with the trip. Not gonna get him to bite. Robbie Hyde in the comment section. Salvi, the fastest man alive. <laughs> Santana pulling one, and he has a ton of room to work with. That is a fair ball. This thing Perez is will trot home, and cruising into second with an RBI double is Carlos Santana. His third hit of the day. He has reached base in all four plate appearances. It is 7-3, Royals. Yeah, Santana just got a little spinner. He was trying to throw him a slider, but it just didn't slide enough. It just kind of spun out there. That's why he was kind of he kind of got hit it off the end of the bat right there. But once you stay through it you can keep that ball fair and it's off to the races. Second three hit game of the season for Santana. Yeah those are huge two out RBI's are, are very big. They've scored they've had some of their biggest innings with two outs. Good to see for uh, Santana and the Royals. Check swing from ah. Rivera it's in there for a strike the off speed stuff from Simber. Did have a question there from Robbie I too earlier on the Salvi triple. He said, "Dude, that could have been an insider if he booked it from the get-go. Do you agree?" I don't know. I don't know. Might be a little tough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For some, but I mean, Salvi I mean, will be the first person to tell you he's not yeah. winning went yeah. many MLB foot races. You got a ricochet, fall down. I mean, a few things need to happen. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to Rivera. 
by the way, post game show, we always do our curious creators. So if you have a question, you can drop it at any time in the live chat and let us know, and we'll address some of them later on. On the ground is second, and Espinal will throw out Emmanuel Rivera. Inning over. Another one for KC. Salvi starts it, setting the table with a triple, and then Santana bringing him in. Climbing into the seventh inning on a gorgeous Wednesday afternoon in Kansas City, Missouri. Live on YouTube, the Royals leading the Blue Jays 7-3. And for Kansas City, just three seasons above the 500 mark from 2006 to 2021. That's tied for the fewest with the Miami Marlins. They do have a championship mixed in there, but it leads us to our third poll question. What should be Casey's top priority for the rest of this year? Keep with junior healthy, growth of young arms, Add assets at the deadline. Call up prospects. Strike one from Jose Quas into the game, facing the top of the order for Toronto. I'll give you one sec to think about it, Yonder. And the poll's open. Royals fans especially, get in there. I mean, I think for me, it's just continue to develop these prospects. Continue to get, you know, all these guys like Bobby Witt Jr. and, and Nicky Lopez and Taylor and Rivera. And MJ Melendez at bats and, and making sure that their transition into the big leagues is not like, hey, we're happy to be in the big leagues, but as in, hey, we're here in the big leagues and we need to win, develop, and continue to get better every single day. Springer did it again. Opposite field hit past the infield. He's done it in back to back at bats. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm going call up prospects yeah because that kind of mixes into the growth of young arms for me keep with junior healthy yeah but also just like see him develop of course you should add, add assets at the deadline but for me I'm like I want to see I mean we talked about this a little last week and the problem star is star shouted us out Vinny Pasquantino yeah. like, let's see it you know if you if you add if you add people at the trade deadline you're also giving away prospects you're giving away a lot of people that might be here in the future so but I think for me, when you look at this Royals team, it's all about getting better every single day and understanding what the, the main goal and the long goal is, and that's to, to continue to you know, get better, but be in a postseason soon. Wow. Now back by Bo Bichette. All right, so everyone get involved, vote. Any comments, too? We can mix those in when we close the poll later, but for now, I think we need to tell the story of Jose Quas, and that's what Brett Dolan's here for. Brett, take it away. Well, guys, he made his major league debut last week in Cleveland. We missed it by a day, but what a great story. Didn't make it as a middle infielder on this fly out to center. He ended up getting released. He was 
making the transition to being a pitcher with the Diamondbacks got released around the pandemic had to put food on the table. He became a driver with FedEx. Look at these packages. He was working from 7 a.m. sometimes to 8 p.m. But his brother Alex wouldn't let him give up on his dream made him go to the park after his shift every night and throw to him made his debut last week and he said he practiced his interview a thousand times in the mirror making his debut and he still had no words for how happy he was. He told me today he's a product of his brother Alex and guys I was on his flight with his family coming out of Cleveland last week. They didn't need the plane to get home. They were flying high smiles from one ear to another and there's a lot of special things about our game guys but the major league debuts and the stories that surround them there are none better than those. That is awesome. Yeah and after that you know 12 plus hour day he's hitting the park in Brooklyn that has one light mm -hmm. and it's sometimes 20 30 degrees and he's playing catch with younger bro on the quest back to the bigs. I like the shout out from FedEx too. That's Congrats. amazing amazing story. That is a wild story. Say it, take, it takes a village. Right? It takes a village. Yes. To do big things and. You know he's got a good arm he's he's, he's a tough tough against right handers. A live arm. No question about it. He was so pumped when he was first called up. He's like I, I got first class. <laughs> he's looking around then gets to the hotel tons of free food. It's like. Just happy to be here man. He's like I'll do dishes you know whatever. They're like, nah, free food. You're a big leaguer now. We saw him for a couple minutes today, too, in the clubhouse. Just nice, appreciative, and, and still kind of mentioning that he's pinching himself. Good take by Vladdy. The delivery is quirky you now. It gets on you. It's, it's three quarters, but, you know, not only is it is it kind of submariner ish or, or side armor but it's 94 95 coming at you it's just a, an uncomfortable but we're seeing Guerrero right now he's trying to make adjustments. he's trying to see the ball as deep as possible that's why you're seeing him hit those foul balls to the right side and good lift by Vladdy Jr. to left but well documented is the win situation at the K today that one brought Benintendi back towards the field away from the track. Got a little bit off the end of the bat right there. He still thought he had enough of it though, but with the win, the way it is. You got to go oppo today. Yep. Which you're not doing on that pitch. No. <laughs> and 102 off the bat. I mean, you got a pretty good handle on it. Whew. Whiff from Espinal. That is wicked. Chop shot with short way to second. That'll do it for the Blue Jays half of the seven. Seven three Royals looking to add to that and a nice inning from Quas. Let's stretch.
The 2022 Chevrolet MLB All-Star Ballot is now open. Vote daily at MLB.com slash vote to send your favorite players to Los Angeles this summer. And get out and play this Play Ball weekend, June 10th through the 12th. Free events being held in communities across the country. Register your kids today. So go to MLB.com slash Play Ball Weekend for more information. Love that. Both of those. The Play Ball Weekend and... All-star voting opens up. The name that we're shouting out, we did a little bit like two hours ago. I'll, I'll do it one more time. Starting catcher, if not at least, deserves to be on the roster for sure. Alejandro Kirk for Toronto. Oh, yeah. Four hit Absolutely. day yesterday. He sits wow. today. But he is a stud. Absolutely. The plate yeah. discipline, the contact, it's all working for him. His teammate, Julian Merriweather, is going to handle the seventh here. Tell you what, man, Kirk, he's been unbelievable so far. The way he can handle a staff, the way he catches, but clutch hitting. One of the favorites for the Blue Jays. Definitely a good egg, man. Yeah, the you know, he, he Montoya, this year has been great. Yeah, and Montoya, when we talked to him about it, right, he was like, man, he needs to be the starter. He needs to be yeah. the all star starter. I mean, for the American League, he's done a phenomenal job. He was raving about him. Best hitting catcher in the AL in the first half of the season so far. Some of the usuals in that spot down on offense so far. Ooh. Oh, God. Taylor plunked on the back. He was able to turn in time to get away from that one. Not from hitting him, but in a better spot. Yeah, it's just a slider. I mean, all you're trying to do right there is protect yourself. but. One of those that just spins out of your hand if you're a pitcher. Ooh. It's not too bad. Left tricep. Still hurts, but not too bad. Number nine hitter, Nicky Lopez. GQ said Salvi and Bobby, both all stars. Uh, I think that's a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say one. I think Ben Attendee is, is oh? the guy you got to think about when we talk about the year that he's had, you know, the year he's putting together as well. You know, it's, it's very hard to, to do what you're doing, and, and he's been doing that, right? He's been, he's been having a good year. I like, who, who did you have in mind? Scott Barlow out of the bullpen for yeah. Kansas City. Yeah, he's been phenomenal for yes. them. Yes. <laughs> Suman said Salvi getting traded. Definitely no. I do not see that happening no. whatsoever. Here's your player of the month for the Royals, Ben Intendi. 100 from Merriweather, ball one, but. We can throw some names at it. It's relevant to our question that's open right now, poll wise. Assets for KC to acquire via trades of veterans. Names that come to mind on the squad right now. Yeah, that's some of the relievers, but Maryfield and Benintendi, runner going, bunt on one bounce to the pitcher, Merriweather, and the runner advances. Taylor to second on the sacrifice from Lopez. These teams can match up for trades, by the way. Yeah, I'm interesting right now what I'm seeing from Nicky Lopez and, and, and the essence of a bunt. I think it was more of a hit and run they had going on. Trade if Nicky Lopez is going to have some some talks with Matheny or one of the bench coaches in that dugout because it was a 7 3 ball game late in the game. Mary Field is going to find some and open going space to. in right he's center. Going to. Taylor will score easily and Witt will slide into second. Two bags for two hit wit. He absolutely smelled that double. Nice slider right there, staying through the baseball. Once again, that, that tacking on runs every inning for the Royals. They're feeling nice. Good slider, and he smelled it right off the bat, right? 
Look at him go. He was thinking too right off the gate. That's a baseball player right there with Merrifield. You know, I think we talk about trade deadline. He's going to be a guy that teams are going to talk about. You know, he, he he's such a leadoff, good, really good leadoff, a guy that can run, a guy that plays every day. He's very durable. He can play in the outfield. I think some teams are going to be calling for him. And, it, you know, if you're the Royals, you're listening, right? You're listening to try to get a top end prospect and continue your search to. Being a, a really good contending team soon in the future. Yeah, that's position player wise, the two guys to target for me Maryfield and then the guy behind him that we're looking at right now. Bitch. Yeah, that is just <laughs> as unhittable as it gets, man. 99 miles an hour, down and away. Benetendi completely, even though you're thinking fastballs because he's throwing so hard, it's, it, there's not much you can do with that pitch. Oh. Dot. Unbelievable. And now a whiff. Gone fishing in the dirt. Yep. Gone fishing in the dirt. Now that's a good block right there as well by Zach Collins. I got it thrown 100 mile an hour and 89 mile an hour slider. That's that's potential saved run right there. Not easy to do. Kept it right in front of him. Make sure he looked at the runner at second base. Fire to strike to first. You know, and it's funny. I, I played with him in, for the Chicago White Sox and. Obviously known for his bat first game in the big leagues first at bat goes deep in Arlington against the Rangers. But you know he's gotten a chance here to to have an opportunity in Zach Collins to catch and, and, and do his thing and he certainly can hit. Yeah former first round pick. Tenth overall. They tried a couple of those today. Interesting to see, you know, Kansas City, they, they have some athletes that we talked about, so you got to keep them close, especially with two outs. Nothing in two. Bobby Witt Jr. having a nice day. Yeah, this will be a fun at bat. Not now, you're old too, but it's definitely a fun at bat, and you understand that you're going to get a heater. He's got in two right now, but I think more than not, we're going to see. What do you think? Do you think we're going to see another slider down in the, in the dirt? Yes. Or oh, they're going to challenge him up in the zone? What do you got? He's been better against laying off those pitches up in the zone. I think they're going slider down. Nope. They went way up. I saw what well, we both did. Some front office members of the Royals today were talking about the progression of Bobby Witts at bats. He said, knowing what to lay off of upstairs. I mean, that was easier, but he's going to line one up. That was the slider to left, and we are through seven. Nice bounce back day for the Royals offense so far this afternoon. It is 8 3 to the 8th.
Google Cloud is powering StatCast with massive amounts of data points to reveal new insights, taking you deeper into the game than ever before. Google Cloud is the official cloud technology of Major League Baseball. Poll number three, done. Top priority for the rest of the season for KC, growth of young arms. I think that's Royals fans talking out loud and saying, hey, who's our guy in the rotation right now? Well, that's also knowing, too, that when they won here, they had top end guys, too. And they had really good arms. They felt like that was their, their way of, of going out there and, and winning ball games, defense and pitching. But I also agree with that, right? I mean, Bobby Wood Jr. needs to stay healthy. Of course, and that's yeah. a given. Yeah. And you want to see him blossom into the superstar that he is certainly capable of becoming. It is your number one for him. One of KC's best arms, Josh Stallman. Oh, ho. Yeah, he brings it. You're going <laughs> to see absolute fuel. Forcing curve sinker. Upper 90s. Have fun, Tapia. <laughs> He's had so uh, fun so far today. Ryan Mel with a home run in at bat number one. There's Bobby. Stallmont and Barlow, two best in the bullpen this year for Kansas City. Then you're like 80 mile an hour curve. Yeah, which guys are hitting 200 off of. Mm. Not fun. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like repeating that curve after you miss out over like that, especially one one count. I've tried. So now at this point he's like, Oh, here we go now. It's, it's Tapia knows the whole stadium that. knows a heater's coming right now. This is yeah. 97, 98 miles an hour coming at you. It's pretty much get your foot down and go have some fun. It's a party out in front. Tapia loves fastballs. Here we go. Oh. Time it up. Everybody knew that was coming. <laughs> Back to the second. Oh, yeah. Launch angle. Brady Sanger, distance Nero. for days. And the blazer, of course, if you're new to the party here. They've been rocking that thing for a while now. Goes back to last season. Another heater? Yep. Oh yeah. And on the hands. At this point it's just going to be a heater heater heavy. You know he, he, that's what I love about talking to the coaches MJ Melendez. We talked earlier there's that heater right there just a, a hair late. But he says you know there's so much to to kind of get ready for in a young catcher. Understanding the adjustments, understanding what's what the analytical department is trying to do, and on top of that, as a as a young catcher, trying to play really good baseball. And he went back to the curve. He did. That was his best one so far. That was a good one. That was down. Are they good? Just good hitters spoil good pitches, man. And you see it every single day where, where you, you get a guy. And, you know, I used to talk to Chapman all the time. He was my roommate in Cincinnati. He used to tell me, how do guys in the big leagues hit my stuff? How do they foul it off? It's like, that's well, they're just good hitters. They're the best on the planet, Beraldis. You know, back then with Chapman, nobody threw 102, nobody threw 103 miles an hour. And I was always amazed by the hitters that would even, you know, put it in play, let alone. And now you're seeing a consistent basis of pitchers out there throwing 98, 99 miles an hour, and yet guys are, are laying off of it or guys are adjusting if you throw them a hook. I mean, the, the amount of hitters right now that, that are just so good at what they do is, is unbelievable. But yet the arms as well are unbelievable. Tapia swings through and he wins the battle. Stalmont, a tough one. And the curveball's clicking now. Yeah, that was just a tough, tough pitch. Not much you can do with it, Tapia. You have to respect the heat. You have to respect the fastball at 98, 99 miles an hour. You throw him a bender like that. Good luck. On the eighth pitch. Yeah. Ooh. Not 
over here. I see that first fastball and I'm jumping all over it. I want no part of that curve whatsoever. It's an easy 96, easy 97, huh? With carry, I mean, you can hear it from up here that mitt just bouncing. Get yourself a heater. One up. Miss outside, miss inside. Guriel had a single back in the fourth. He's one for three. Think he'll go to the hook right here, 2 0. It's an 8 3 nothing ball game. I would challenge him with a heater. And in the air to left, Ben Intendi is circling around, camping under, and making the catch for out number two. Now I was thinking about what you just said. Like 10 years ago, easy. It's a fastball every time. The only thing is nowadays, I mean, you see often any pitch, any count. Yeah. Pitch sequencing, sequencing, if I can talk, just such a big part of today's game. Absolutely. You know, it's not like a sure thing that no, you're no, getting no, a 2-0 no. fastball. Absolutely, no, no. Even you, from I a two-pitch guy. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and, not only, and not only that, but guys are throwing 98, 99 miles an hour. It doesn't matter. I mean, you'll still get guys that they feel more comfortable with their slider than they do with their fastball. In this day and age, you know, I still go back to, to watching and talking to pitching coaches around the league, and they still say, no matter if you throw 98, 99 miles an hour, you still have to locate. These hitters are too good. These hitters will, will hit anything that's out over the plate, no matter how hard you throw it. You can have really good secondary stuff, but if your fastball is not where it needs to be located wise, it's going to get hit. Mixing in more of the curveballs now. Stalmont v. Chapman. I mean, his stuff has been very, very crisp for Josh Stalmont. I mean, it's, it's electric, it's got good rhythm. The stuff plays, the stuff is real. Fan perspective from Mad Mike in the YouTube chat. Dude throws hard. Hear it <laughs> buzzing. <laughs> yeah, he throws hard. Mike, that might be your refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> he he does he does throw it. I mean, it is live and it's extension. He gets out there once he releases the ball. You know, it's different when you throw in 97 98 but you got extension like that just picks up miles on you and it's got carry right there like that ball just doesn't go down that ball is dotted down in the zone with some life on it and you can tell with the catcher when he catches it how heavy his hands move right when he catches it if his hands are moving that means it's a heavy it's a really heavy fastball good spot for it Mano a mano. Get yourself a heater. This is fun when it's an 8 3 ball game like this and you can go challenge guys. If you're a pitcher, obviously you want to locate, but if you're a hitter, you understand what's coming, right? And I mean, if, if he throws him a curveball here, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Chapman swings over it. This is a heater coming. He's thrown heaters on every, pretty much on every fastball count. Yes, sir. Climbs the ladder and retires the side in order. That was fun to talk through it. Three up, three down in the eighth. Back to the Royals half.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. 8-3, Royals scored their last run thanks to this triple off the bat of Salvador Perez StatCast powered by Google Cloud. Sprint speed, that's below average. That's expected <laughs> for our boy, the veteran, the big man. Home to third, just under 15 seconds. And our expert research man behind the scenes, Elijah, what is the average home to third? We'll get you that in a sec. I don't know, but hey, he got his uniform dirty. Yeah, he did. He's back. So that was the triple in the sixth. Santana's double scored the run. That made it 7-3. One more since for KC. In the seventh, Michael A. Taylor hit by a pitch, eventually brought home by Whit Merrifield. Andrew Vasquez. I'm intrigued. If he gets another hit, the Royals win. Huh? Disregard. Floats out to Tapia. One out in the eighth. Brad Dolan take over. Well, guys, the Royals are trying to pick up win number 2001 here at the K. They got 2,000 on Saturday against Houston. They became the sixth team in their current stadium to get there. You think of Fenway and Wrigley and Dodger Stadium, mix in Oakland and the Los Angeles Angels for the six. Now, the lease for this ballpark runs through 2031. There's new ownership. They love a brand new ballpark downtown by 2026. Those things don't happen overnight, but uh, the K could be on its way out and I grew up in the middle of nowhere and this was the closest ballpark for me so uh, enjoyed watching Bo Jackson George Brett and others but uh, after 2000 plus wins I guess we'll find out how many more are in the future. Good call. Ha! I mean yet this area is quiet compared to some of the like ballpark villages that we visit yeah. We're on the road a lot so. Oh look at them run. Melendez. Oh nice oh. flip. Flip. Oh. And they got him. Vasquez covers the bag and will make sure Melendez is okay. Well, he's staying on the bag just in case. Yeah, but I think Vasquez rolled his ankles. Oh, that did not look pretty right there. But what a play. What an absolute play. Ooh. Now Biggio keeping him in one spot. Ouch. Well, they're not going to review the play. That ankle really took a took a toll right there. Never a good thing to see. Mm -hmm. How about the play though by Biggio? That was a smooth big league flip. Did he get him? Uh, I never want to see guys head, head first dive into first base. It's a big no no. Yeah, he's coming out of the game. Oh. Injury exit. There'll be some time for replacement. Yeah, right here. Watch his, watch his right ankle as he's stepping on the bag. Oh. Right there, the inside of that ankle. Oh, he's like double. He double rolled it. Yeah, one. Ooh. Foot caught the plate, but not enough of it. Yeah, and it creates yeah. an injury. We'll be right back.
Jamie Garcia is the eighth pitcher of the day for Toronto. Charlie Montoyo calling for Garcia to take over for Vasquez, who was injured on the last play. Off day tomorrow for Toronto, so you can definitely unload with the bullpen. We'll get to Yimmy in a moment. Here's the play one more time. I mean, sweet flip. They get the out. It's just not catching enough plate. Oh, That's the bad roll, the man. second one. I mean, I, I think he kind of rolled it there, but then the second one was definitely where it was just a bad one. If you see that roll right there, boom, right there. And then he just completely rolls it. So with the injury replacement, extra time for Yimi Garcia, who wasn't ready. And we'll let you know if we hear anything. We're in the late stages here, so we might not get an update in time. Oh, it's clear. It's rolled. It's a rolled right angle. Oh, well, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've always been intrigued by, by the pitcher when you get hurt. How come they don't warm up in their in their bullpen? Well, you remember last year, I believe it was the World Series, definitely the playoffs, Jake Odorizzi came on and he, he needs a lot of time because he's a starter, but he was coming out of the bullpen, but it, I believe it was an injury replacement and it was like 20 minutes. He did his whole routine and everything had to be out here. I, it's already been too much time. I remember I talked to him about it. I talked to a couple others. I just don't remember what the exact word is. I think they said, though, it would be nice if I didn't have to come out and showcase my entire routine to the world and just get that done in the bullpen. But whatever. I don't know the answer. No. I don't either. Real talk, as usual. <laughs> Scott and Yonder show. And while they're warming up, Let's remind you, the Blue Jays YouTube channel is your destination. For highlights and behind-the-scenes footage, visit YouTube.com slash Blue Jays. Also, Kansas City fans can head over to YouTube.com slash Royals. Exclusive interviews, original content, you know the deal. All coming at you. You know the deal. Most runs for the Royals since May 15th, and that was in Denver at Coors Field. They're like, whatever, take all the time you want. Oh, he, a lot of smiles today. I'll tell you what, he's had enough, huh? <laughs> you he's know. down for the count. You know it, the kiddos. Yeah. It's nap time. It's nap time. <laughs> oh, man. Rally hats on. Good Toronto Blue Jays fan club showing up yeah. for this series had, in Missouri. I think they've had too many. <laughs> a lot of soda. Oh, there we go. A lot of soda, a lot of, a lot of water drinking. Yep. Oh, there we go. Now we're talking. You'll have his post game too. More of this for 30 minutes post game. We'll go over full highlights. We will preview next game. We have curious creators, so this is a good chance also for the creators to get any more questions that you have in for yonder post game. He's just going to be firing answers off when we get there, and we'll see if the Jays can play catch up. The one thing I will remind you is that the Toronto Blue Jays offense is excellent, yeah. especially lately. And if you look even over the past couple weeks, best pull percentage in baseball in the past two weeks, best chase rate in a good way, meaning they are chasing much less than they were earlier in the season and better than any team in baseball, spitting at pitches. And we've seen that in bunches from the Blue Jays lately, the success also with runners in scoring position for the offense. So. Things are working for Charlie Montoyo's club. They're on a nice run at the moment. And they're chasing the Yankees along with everyone else in the American League East. I agree. Fun ball club. I mean, Vladdy Jr. can go on a tear on like almost any. We're back in biz. Yimmy Garcia facing MJ, or make that Carlos Santana. MJ Melendez, the second out in the eighth. Garcia. Jamie Garcia, he's always had a good arm, huh? Yeah. You've seen him? Oh, yeah. I faced him before, too. 
Not fun. Good slider can spin it. Good fastball. This could be our player of the game. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Two oh, here we go. Games. Uh, ball is. We'll get one. I thought, I thought we were going to get one right there. One. Look at the numbers for Santana when he's on YouTube. That's, that's ridiculous. Been doing it, huh? Yeah. He's reached base four times. Five for seven. This Wednesday and last Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon. You make sure you get Carlos Santana in the lineup. Garcia signed up on a two year contract. Fly ball pitcher. Good paint. Oh, I'll go right back to that. Down and away like that. Good time to throw a breaking ball right here and freeze them. Yeah, the curveball has been hit hard this year. Opponent average on the curve, which he uses 22% of the time, 467. Hmm. Well, Santana's not catching up to the fastball yet. What about the slider? He has a lot of pitches he's for a He's got a good slider. I think he's going to go heater here. Yep. There we go. He's challenging him. That one ticked up to 95. Yeah. <laughs> you see Santana right there just a little bit late. Oh, but it's a healthy hack. He knows he missed it. You don't get too many of those like that right down the middle. Ninth pitch of the matchup. I think you've seen a lot, a lot, one too many fastballs here. Got to be careful. Again. I like the challenge. This was one of Dusty Baker's favorite bullpen arms in the postseason last year. Oh, like he was coming out every day. Every day, right? It would be like sixth inning, two on, yimmy time. Yeah, every day. And he knew it too. Yeah. He knew his role. <laughs> yeah, Early he knew traffic, his role. <laughs> I'm the guy. Santana's uh -oh. going to pull that one to right, and Tapia is oh fighting boy. the sun, and it drops. Santana's on again. And getting to second. That's a tough sign as soon as it was hit. He was, he was battling with that the moment it was up in the air. He tried everything possible there. Move his feet, try to get sideways on it, try to use his hands to shield off. There's not much he can do in that situation. I mean, right there, he gets underneath and he starts moving his feet. He starts realizing, okay, how can I get an angle on this ball? Okay, Yonder, sunglasses, check. Using glove to I mean, shield from hand. the sun. He I mean, used everything. What else could you do in that spot? Not much. It's a hit for Santana. It's a tough situation, yeah. It's a hit for Santana. It's a double for Santana right there, but there's just, it's unfortunate right there for Jamie Garcia and for Tapia, but it's not much you can do. Mm. Strike one to Rivera. First four hit games since August 22 of last season for Santana. Ooh. So it at least gave him a chance to take a stab at it. You know, sometimes you see the ball lost in the sun and they don't even make an effort. Like he, he did have a chance. The sun is one of the worst things for an outfielder and another one is like, you know, during that 6.30, 7 o'clock where, where it's kind of into, into the, the skyline of it. 
where you just can't can't see the ball. When the ball goes up, you just lose it. Those are the worst times. Garcia punches out Rivera, so the Sun double doesn't hurt. Yimmy Garcia gets the job done. See if the Blue Jays offense can strike. They need a lot. The road trip continues, and the pregame show begins 30 minutes before each contest. June the 15th, Twins and Mariners, I like it. 4 o'clock Eastern will be in Seattle, Pacific Northwest action, and then up to Toronto on the 30th for the Rays and Jays. And on the 13th, the Brewers take on the Twins in Minneapolis. Those are all playoff contenders coming at you on YouTube. Carlos Santana's last four-hit game, that was my birthday. August 22nd, last year. Pop up the poll question, now's the time. You two player of the game is, pick your Royal, Santana Witt Jr., Salvi Witt. And don't, don't be that person in the YouTube chat that's like, well, what if the Jays come back? Well, then we'll reshuffle it. Yeah. We're capable of doing that. Highly trained individuals behind the scenes. I will say Make no messing switch. around right now, huh? Mm -mm. Scott Barlow, your closer. In a five-run game, non-save situation. Team trying to snap a little losing skid. Not messing around. Neither is that ERA and the chase rate, too, for Barlow. Or the hair. Or the hair, dropping in 79. Do you notice the theme, though? Some of the best relievers in baseball have good a lot flow. of hair coming at you. Yeah, good flow. I don't think that's... Josh Hader? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's, you know, by chance. I think there's something to that. We've talked about it a couple times this year. Oh. Doesn't get it. It's slider, curveball, four-seam fastball. He uses the slider most frequently. I mean, this is like a pitching backwards reliever in terms of the secondary stuff. He uses the fastball less than the slider and the curve. He's got good bite. He likes to back door. He likes to front hip it or back foot it. All it is for a hitter right now is just trying to get it up. Right? The slider, you got to completely get it up. Hopefully, it's a strike and staying through a baseball. That's how you hit a slider. Spoiling. I'm wondering what the approach is. Like when you're looking at the report, maybe check out an AB or two. Of Barlow and you're a Jays hitter. Like, what's the plan? Because you can't, if you sit fastball, you're gonna be sitting for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's, it's understanding. You know, he throws 80% sliders. So all you're trying to do right now is just completely sit on one pitch, and you know, you gotta understand what he's trying to do. I know he's getting some work in. So these are situations in a ball game where, as a closer's coming in, you, you're kind of like, okay, is he gonna get some work in and throw some heaters? Or is he going to come in a situation where it doesn't matter what the score is? 
and he's going to go right through to his strength. Clearly, right now, he's going to his strength. Lowest fastball usage in baseball this season is number two, Matt Whistler. Number one, Whistler's are all sliders. This just speaks to the trend in baseball, especially from relievers. It's just saying, all right, two or three pitches, and then let's lock in on them and use them more and more. Oh, yeah. No okay. doubt about it. I mean, even going back to last year for Barlow, where he was very effective, he's upped his curveball usage significantly. There's one four seamer in there, and, and less of the fastball. They're like, hey, Stick to your strengths. Collins to right. A run for Merrifield in the corner, and it is going to one hop and kick up against the wall. Okay, things starting off successfully for Toronto. It's a leadoff double for Zach Collins. You want to pass the baton because the big boys are coming soon. That's how you do it. He's got another, another slider. I think too many sliders right there. Got out in front, but the key to this right here is that this slider is up in the zone. Collins didn't didn't do too much with it. Stayed through it. Picked up himself another double. Number nine hitter, Kevin Biggio. I still would like to see though with a guy like this. That right there, first pitch heater. You know, I think it, it's clear, and that's that's kind of a situation with a young catcher as well, understanding that hey, these guys are here to see a slider, and they're going to see a slider. We got to at some point mix in a heater, and he certainly has done that right there with that first pitch strike. And now, now it puts the hitter at a disadvantage. Now it's like, oh man, he threw me this first pitch heater. Will he back it up and throw it again? Goes right to his strike. It's a great pitch. He sped him up with that heater. Now you have a lot of places you can go to. You can go down and in. You can go up the ladder. You can go backdoor slider. Putting the hitter at a disadvantage right now, 2 Getting weak contact. A charging wit's going to be a tough play, and the throw's off the mark. And the Jays will score their fourth run of the day. Collins comes home. Should be an error on the throwing side for Witt. And Piscio is on board, and now things get interesting yonder. Yeah, that's you know what it is? That's just a young player trying to make a play with a score 8-3. That's that's a that's a play right there. You gotta just put it in your pocket. And you gotta you got a guy on second base make an error right there. That's gonna be a run. You understand the wheels that Biggio has. And now you get the top of that order. Hit plus E6 scores the run. Strike one to Springer. <laughs> you saw him go. Mm. Actually, you, you might have said your new catchphrase. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sarcastically. Right. You're right. It's for the pitcher. Thank you. Nice stop. Yeah, but that one, you know, that one was, was, was a close. Strike. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, you're right. Was, that one was close. I just like the, the yeah. thank you. Thank you. Melendez made a nice pick on that second pitch. Third roller with chance to redeem. There's one and on the first double play. Oh, no. At this point, he just says, sure, review it. I mean, yeah. there's two outs in the ninth. I mean, Taylor made, you just have to be quick because Springer can move. Yeah, but I, I I got him safe at first, I think. Oh, a little closer than you think. This should be the angle. They're checking. Uh, I think he's safe. Oh, first base. base. Hmm. Run it back. Slow. Okay. Here we, here we go. go. 
Where's the foot? He's oh, in. He's yeah, in. He's safe. That'll be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna already like book it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I keep the book. Spread it down. Fielder's choice. Yep. Springer replaces Biggio. One out in the ninth. I got it. I got it. I mean, I, I, I don't understand why it takes that long, <laughs> though. That Sometimes I do, but that I one. Mean, we just, no, we just saw it. Should be pretty easy. Well, because you have to reverse it, so you need you need your conclusive evidence. And you need it all to flip it over. Yep. And that's the combo, and then in a minute, you're gonna hear us stop talking, so we can hear the umps. That's a new thing this year, and I love it. Here we go. Upon, Upon review, review call on the field, the field is overturned. overturned. The runner, runner is safe. safe. Toronto, Toronto retains the challenge. Nice. Crew chief Larry Vanover with the pipes. One out, one on for Toronto in the ninth. See how energetic I am here in the ninth? I mean, for some teams, four-run game, oh. nasty closer on, I'm like, eh. I mean, you never know what the happening. Blue Jays. Yeah, exactly. I Got the know. juicy part of the lineup card as well. Bo Bichette time. Man, I love his swing, man. You know, I, I, was, I saw him when he was 12 years old hitting at Coors Field, and I, and I remember going up to him and saying, hey, keep that swing. That, that swing's going to work at all times. That's a base hit swing right there. That's right. They're in Grand Slam range. Yes, sir. Springer to second. Vladdy Jr. The good news is, yeah, Vladdy can't tie the game. No. I mean, he can make it real close. Yeah. He's on one of those home run streaks. He didn't homer yesterday, but already for this month, Four in his last seven games after just three in May. He had a two run opposite field smash to right center field off a changeup up on Monday. Going for it there, changeup away. That was a good pitch right All there. Slider, I guess I should say. But yes. Weak contact and should be no problem for the covering Barlow. Now they're in scoring position, two of them. That's a good out trade, though. Springer in Bichette. Cleanup hitter Santiago Espinal. He did some heavy lifting. That was a big story for him. Added 15 pounds, good pounds. In the offseason, more pop. I mean, he's smoking some baseballs this year. I mean, he's looking like an everyday guy, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. More known for his glove initially. He's pretty much won that job, man. What a block right there. Huh? Really nice. Ooh, look at him slide his hips. We can show that again. Slide hit, hit his hips, and as the, wherever he goes with his glove is where his hips are going to lead. What a great, great block right there. That's that's textbook right there. That's what's going to be fun you know, in the years ahead, too, to see him at the catch position because he's oh, yeah. so athletic and he's so quick. Oh, did you see Espinoff? Yeah. He, he got buckled there. Yeah. Ooh. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Oh man. And then the fastball. You want the slider, or you want the curve? The mid 80s or the high 70s? It's a good take right there on that slider. Yes. Two balls, two strikes to Espinal, who was acquired in June of 2018 from Boston. Steve Pierce trade. Pierce goes on to the yep. Red Sox, wins World Series MVP, and now Blue Jays have their everyday second baseman. That's 
It's a good trade all around. Yeah, that is. That's been all he's trying to do right here is continue to pass the baton. Just got to get on base. That's a good take. Tough take. Yeah. That's all he's got to do right here is, is pitch location, making sure his biggest win is to get to first base and let Tapia have a chance. Curveball's the money pitch for Barlow. He tried it there. Yeah, tough spot. Royals bullpen. And I mentioned it earlier. It's it's Barlow and Stallmont shining. And then some rough patches. This is starting to become laborious, though. 25 pitches for Barlow. Payoff. That's just staying alive right there. What's that song? Staying alive like the Bee Gees? Yeah. I, I'm not going to sing, especially two outs in the ninth. Just a, maybe in the post game <laughs> show. <laughs> He's just going every other slider curveball. Another payoff. Popped up. In on the hands, but the sun is defeated on that fly ball. Lopez is all over it. Game over. Royals win it and salvage a game in the three game set. 8 4 is your final score. Blue Jays fall to 33 and 23 on the season. It's the 18th win of the year for Kansas City to go along with the 37 losses. And a nice huddle up and a happier day for the Royals to end this series before they begin four games against the Baltimore Orioles tomorrow. Post game show time. You ready? You I'm ready. Let's ready? do this. Let's go. The music's always ready. It's the post game show. Scotty Braun, Yonder Alanta will hear from Brett Dolan soon as the Royals take it by a final score of eight to four. The offense woke up and we spoke to manager Mike Matheny this morning. And he was like, I mean, today is the day we're due guys like <laughs> this is happening. And it certainly did. And it wasn't via long ball, even though that baseball was carrying to right field this afternoon. Two homers on the Toronto side, but they couldn't string together consistent hitting. Their offense with runners in scoring position wasn't at its best, even though it's been bright lately for the Blue Jays. They do take two out of three in this series in KC. Jays are off tomorrow. Also keep in mind, Yusei Kikuchi was removed after recording just two outs in the first inning, and this still felt like a ball game. Yeah, it they could were get to, out of hand for others. Yeah, they were able to tie it in the in the third inning. So it was brand new ball game. But you know what? A lot of credit to the Royals. Eight eight runs on 13 hits. Uh, everything pretty much went their way. Um, just in general, a, a good game pitching performance by Brady Zinger. He he was phenomenal as well. Really good defense overall. Clean game by the Royals. 12 hits for Toronto, the visiting ball club as they fall and for Kansas City they wipe away a little three game losing skid still for the Blue Jays too, the run that they're on. They have won 11 of their last 14 games. We'll get you a post game interview. Two of them actually in just a moment right here on YouTube and then we'll run through full highlights if you missed anything. So a lot to do and we'll have 30 minutes devoted to these two teams and I believe this is going to be our player of the game isn't it. I think so. I think he deserves it. He's reached base all five plate appearances today and here he is Carlos Santana joining yep. us live on YouTube Carlos congratulations on the win and a day where you just could not avoid the bases reaching five times including four hits take us through your favorite at bat that's how I want to start things what was your favorite at bat of the day 
Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, it's a good day today. And, you know, try, not try too much. Um, play my game. I know I'm a slow star, but I keep it working, never stop. And think about day to day, game to game, and, and try to help my team the more they can. And we have a trophy for you too, Carlos. You are the YouTube player of the game. You deserve it with the four for four afternoon along with a walk. So it was a walk, single, single, double, double. We'll get you a trophy in a sec. Do you have it? Oh, yeah, yeah, let's see. Yeah. It. I mean, I mean, this is a little heavy. And yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised, but <laughs> a little heavy. <laughs> I mean, it's a great day, blessed day. So thank you, God, for for giving me opportunity. Uh, my energy play uh, hard and help to my team the more they can. Hey, Carlos, what, what? Maybe I'll help you out here. Did you have a favorite at bat? of your five today, of your five plate appearances? Or what about the one where the baseball carries to right field and Rymel Tapia has given it a look and it just kept going out there? I mean, every every about this my favorite because I'm producing <laughs> to the game. That's so. right. Yeah, I mean, um, this is a fight, fight at bat. Uh, you know, I'm doing great approach. Uh, um, try to make it my pitch and, and try to go contact and, and see. Carlos, Gianni Alonso here. Look, for my favorite at bat was the two out RBIs, man. Those, that's winning at bat. That's winning baseball right there. But for me, uh, it, it looked like your old self. You were swinging at the right pitches. You were trying to use the whole field. You were very short to the to the ball. W what have you been working on? And then surely today, going into today, this morning, this at bat, you felt like like you felt pretty good, especially after your first at bat. Yeah, I mean, I'm working out. I'm working out hard um, every day, never stop. Um, you know, um, I try to be ready, be ready to the game every at bat. And uh, I mean, today is a great day. It's a great day. I never, I never my head down um, and keep it working. Keep it working. I mean, this is a long season, and uh, and I had to think about it day to day, um, every game, every at bat, and and see. Carlos, who's the clubhouse DJ after a win like today? Like, who's playing the beats? And can you give me a song example? Like, do you get to pick one? Because you're the YouTube player of the game today. Yeah, I mean, it's a great song. It's a great song. And I tried to put in the song for the great, great energy. Um, you know, um, the song is from DR. And uh, I mean, I like it. I like it. Music is my passion before the game and, and, and taking uh, 20, 25 minutes before the game and, and, and try to hear the music. I mean, music is my passion and before the game and, and see, I mean, attitude is very important for me. Carlos, uh, you were shut down back-to-back -back days with a guy like yourself, a veteran guy like yourself who, who's, you know, been a leader, is a leader. Did you guys take that personal and saying, hey, man, not today. Today, that's, that's not going to happen. We're going to take one from Toronto. I mean, this is not happening. You know, this is happening. Um, you know, um, this is a long season. Yep. Everybody know, um, 162 game. Um, you know, this is like third month. we in June. And, uh, I mean, we had to keep it up. I mean, we had to younger player, great talent, hungry play hard every day and 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 try to my spirit, try to um, talking, especially like Bobby and uh, Rivera. Yeah, this those guys had great great uh, great talent and and try to help the more they can for get better every day. Carlos from one first baseman to another man, I love your game, I love your swing, I love your passion. And I love the fact that you're a leader and you don't let one day just carry over. You continue to work hard, man. Thank you. Proud of you, man. You, you got to keep going. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bless. Yeah, we appreciate it, Carlos. And you're six for eight on YouTube for our two games. Oh, so yeah. we'll, we'll keep yeah, running yeah. your games, okay? And you keep racking up those YouTube trophies, every day, too. baby. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Keep going. <laughs> we appreciate you. Right. That's Carlos Santana, who is your YouTube player of the game. The poll results to prove it on an 8-4 win, 45%. It was pretty obvious today. Yeah. I mean, he, he couldn't stay off the base I mean, pass. Four for four, got his uniform dirty. Yep. You know, loves to work and loves to get after it. Doesn't let one day of, of bad play determine what his year's going to be like. You know, certainly today he was ready to roll and he was ready to go after that first at bat. Yeah, congratulations to him. And we have full highlights coming up next on the post game show. We'll run through them, including. Those four knocks for Carlos Santana and a winning effort for the Royals on YouTube today.
there was a baseball that ended up there, and we're going to show it to you, included in the highlights right now. You say Kikuchi on the mound, the left-hander with the 391 ERA on the season. You get so much information right here on this 3-0 take. Ooh, all four. Not close. All four. There's another miss. Back-to-back -back walks for KC. Slider City, and now a fastball, oh. and it could find grass. It does. And it's going to score the first run of the game. Kansas City up 1-0. Benintendi, come on down. When you get into a long at bat like that, the baseball guys will reward you, and they sure did for MJ Melendez. And that is on the ground. Pat Short. Emmanuel Rivera will drive in two more for KC and make it 3 0 Royals. And that's going to do it for Yusei Kikuchi. Bags full of Royals again. Santana Rivera and Taylor on. Kikuchi out. Trent Thornton in next for Toronto. Nikki Lopez on a hot, tough Man. one, and Bo Bichette is going to get him. Wow. What an absolute play, man. Santiago Espinal is five for nine in this series. Oh, oh what a grab at third by Rivera. Quick reaction, and he's there. Vacuum mode. Full boat to Tapia. And uh -oh. gets a good hold of this one. Oh, he Deep knows right it. field. He's all over it. Ooh, that ball was absolutely destroyed. Splashdown for Tapia. It's three to one. His second of the season. Not a big power bat, but that went 441 feet. Get up. Get up. That Collins get out of here. a ride. Right center. That's for the 305, baby. Atta boy, Z boy. <laughs> well, he talked about it earlier today. He said, hey, this is a big start for me, man. I got to make sure I pick up this slack. Hell yeah, there he is. Out, but that, that's how you pick up for your boys right there. There he is. Get through there. It does. Boy, bitch. Vigio with a base hit. Get the third. Oh, he's going. Oh, he's up. Hi, boy. All, all that leads to is that secondary right there. That secondary is what allows him to go to third base, man. That's a really good heads up base running right there. And that's winning baseball right there, man. Just vintage Verlander. Like, we, we, me and my brother used to love watching him. That's a run. Yes, That's it run. is. Atta boy. It's the play to first. And the Jays chipping into this advantage for KC. Now coming in and tying up the ball game at three. This inning's getting wild, too, as Salvador Perez drives home Andrew Benintendi. And did you think that Bobby Wood Jr. was going to start flying? Oh, man, I, he had it. He had it. But right now, you just don't want to make the second out at home plate. But yeah, no question about it. Reaching for one, and the play is to second for one, back to first, not in time, and another run comes through. Witt Jr. does score to make it 5-3, Kansas City. Santana chops one into right center in a two-hit day. He reaches for the third time this afternoon. Here we go. That's an absolute rocket. There's two hits right there. Runners moving, and the swing to right center off the bat of Michael A. Taylor carrying towards the wall. It'll punch off the wall. Santana being waved around. Here he comes, no throw. RBI double for Michael A. Taylor. Make it 6-3 Royals. And now rips deep to left. Whit Merrifield has oh, caught. What a catch. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. runs it down. Man, saving runs right there. Huge play for the Blue Jays. Salvi struck out in his first two ABs and then RBI single in the fourth. Toppy in the corner, still going. It's off the wall. There's the carry to right field. Wind is blowing. He's going to go. He's going to be third. He is there at first with a one out triple. Santana pulling one, and he has a ton of room to work with. That is a fair ball. This thing Perez is will trot home, and cruising into second with an RBI double is Carlos Santana. His third hit of the day. He has reached base in all four plate appearances. It is 7-3 Royals. 
And this is us in real life talking about Michael A. Taylor in the Royals half of the seventh on second base and now scoring thanks to Whit Merrifield with the double. Consistent offense today from KC. And then you don't mess around when no. there's tough times yonder. You say, hey, this is our guy. We're, sh we're showcasing him because all-star voting opens up today. Scott Barlow could be there, but a little bit of trouble. Collins with the leadoff double. Biggio reaching on a throwing error. That scores Collins. Bo Bichette, base hit. Got dicey. It, it did, especially when you consider that it's a four-run game and it's Toronto. But Espinal pops out. And that's your ball game. 8-4. Kansas City takes it. Your game summary. Bichette went two for five. Collins had the homer. Santana with a huge day. Four for four, two doubles, an RBI, and a walk. And pretty solid from Brady Singer. He did give up eight hits, scattered them though. Three earned runs, five strikeouts. Eight for your final. So we spoke to Carlos Santana. Brett, you lined up an all-star, didn't you? Indeed I did with Salvador Perez. And guys, we touched on his May and the struggles that he has dealt with, but there have been some signs on this homestand that he is starting to find that stroke again. Going back to the series against Houston where he homered Saturday and Sunday. Today a couple of base hits, including a triple. Knocked in a run and scored a run. And I asked Salvador that I know runs and wins have not been easy to come by, but it may be a day like today might really kind of help move things forward in the right direction. Yeah, it's, every time we win the game, it's, it's important for us, you know. Uh, we come in here every day and try to do the best we can do to win the game. Do you enjoy legging out triples? <laughs> uh, I think my last triple was in 2017, so yeah, it's kind of fun. This offense at times has shown some abilities to break through. What's it going to take for you guys to really kind of find that next level over the next month? Just continue to play hard. I think every time we come into the board, uh, concentration, try to see what the future has, try to do our best in the home play. The thumb can't feel great. I know you don't want to make excuses. What does it feel like? How long will it take for maybe that to uh, finally heal? Yeah, I think every time, if I continue to play, it's going to take a little bit of time. But uh, I, I feel good with my body. Just a little pain sometimes when I check the pitch down away. But besides that, I'm, I'm good. It can be fun, though, right, as a catcher with a hand or a thumb? It's, you know, sometimes a little hard, but I, I love to be behind the home play every night. <laughs> what is your message to these young kids on this team? There's so much young talent. Obviously, there have been some bumps on the road. How do you keep them positive? What do you like to tell them? Play hard, concentration, uh, show up every day, you know, do the best, prepare yourself for a big game. Congratulations. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, sir. Salvador Perez. You heard him say just a little bit of pain and maybe it's bothering him more than that. But again the results have been there over this last homestand. That smile is infectious. A happy Salvador Perez and a producing Perez at the plate guys. I will say it again. It's going to go a long ways towards helping this Royals team pick up a lot more wins going forward than they have enjoyed over these first couple of months. Yeah good stuff Brett and he was on the money when you asked him about the triple. He goes yeah, I don't think I've had one since uh, 2017. That is Correct. So let's run that back. Statcast powered by Google Cloud. Not one bag, not two bags, but three for Salvi. Three total bases right there. Digging for one. And, you know, I, I would say the catch probability is probably pretty high. Yeah. But it just kept carrying. Look at him go. Head first. 26.1 <laughs> on the sprint speed. Average is like 29 ish. That's so fun. Give you an idea. Now, below average speed, he's known for other things. Damage at the plate. His team, victorious, 8-4. Curious creators, we're answering your questions next.
8-4 Kansas City wins it at home at the K. Perfect day weather-wise. And for Royals fans to get back on the winning side of things, there he is. What was the first answer when he was holding the trophy? A little heavy. Everyone says it. <laughs> That's a good thing. Like, we take pride in that answer. That's worth something, okay? Your player of the game, StatCast, powered by Google Cloud. Exit below numbers. So two were 100 plus. Hard hit rate, so that's 95 plus off the bat. Two of them, and then two not quite at that mark, but nice placement, all the right field. That's right. And a walk. Of course, you're going to get a walk out of Santana, despite the year that he's having so far this season, which has been slower than usual for him. Still on base over 30 percent of the time. It's always going to happen if he ever wanted to be, and he's not going to be. He's he's wealthy. He doesn't have to do it, but like he could be a big league umpire. Oh yeah, you no, know what I'm he, saying. He, definitely he knows, knows the zone. zone. It's funny because we came up together uh, through throughout the minor leagues, and he definitely knew the strike zone at when he first played at a young age, and now even more so. But I love the ability and, and what he talks about that you know every day is a positive day, every day is a new day, and he understands that you know he's dealing with MJ Melendez, uh, uh, Bobby Witt Jr., really good talent for not for now and the future, and he's trying to help him out. How to go about it, the veteran way or the right way. Is huge for him, and he takes pride in that. And he said music is his passion, it too. It is. Yeah, because I wanted to know what's what's running during the post game. And he, he, likes said his, they, he likes his Dominican music. Yeah, for we'll sure. get some like Dominican that. music going. So he was ready to go on the last oh, question. Like, yo, I got dancing to do. And we have curious creator questions to answer. Hall of Fame baseball cards. They were our creator spotlight last week. Does Manoa's grandma own any of his rookie cards? Well, we're I not would, I mean, I don't know that, them. but yeah. I, I'm sure. You know, she's the number one fan, so I'm yes. sure she's got a few, right? And uh, if I'm she sure. does, they're ones that are, I would say, super creative, and the art has to be on point, because like Alec told us during the in-game interview, that's mom, but grandma, she's coming, with purple hair. That's cool. Yeah, you know what I love about mom right there? She's got a shirt that says mama. That's you know, good. and then she's yeah. got grandma. I wonder if grandma has a shirt that says abuela. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good crowd, so I like that. Good question. Yeah, that's a good question. And right I know there. he he asked it when Manoa was being interviewed, but we had so much to get to. We didn't get to all the questions, of course, that were being sent to us in real time. Fireball review. What is the state? See, this is good. What is the state of the Angels? And I want to make sure that, especially for the creators that spend the entire afternoon with us on every Wednesday, basically, that you have the ability to ask questions about other baseball teams. 100%. That is certainly possible. We can do that here in the postgame show, especially team of the week, I would say, Angels, because they let go of their world-famous manager in Joe yeah. Madden. I mean, he's yep. done some big things in his career. They've lost 13 games in a row. Mike Trout gets a little hurt yesterday. That's that's not good. Yeah, no, and I think for them and, and the city of Anaheim, they, they weren't expecting this, right? They weren't expecting to be this bad, right, the last 13 games. And, and I felt like ownership just took control of that and said, hey, all right, it's time to move on. They need to hear a different voice. And look, what better way than Phil Nevin? I, I know Phil Nevin, he, he's, he's been talked about being a manager in the future. He's been talked about having that fire attitude, especially when he was a third base coach with the Yankees. He's been used to winning. He's used to winning. He was a really good baseball player. I think having this guy in the clubhouse as Phil Nevin's and, and having – Two MVPs in that clubhouse as well can kind of maybe spark some things and, and play better. Certainly, they're, they're, they're still second in that division. You know, the Houston Astros right now, they're doing everything well. They're pitching. They're healthy. You know, Altuve swinging a bat. Jordan Alvarez is really doing it for them right now as well. So, look, when you look, about, when you look to the Angels, they need some help in the starting rotation. I think when, when we look at them, they were just okay in the starting rotation. I think they need that, but right now, the voice is Phil Nevin, and they're doing the right thing. State of the Angels also is they're not winning the division. Houston's too good, and you would have needed to, to have a faster start in my mind. The Astros can really pitch, by the way, and the Mariners in that division we're getting next week on YouTube right here Wednesday. Well, right here technically in the Pacific Northwest. Longer flight next oh, yeah. week. Make sure you get ready for that one, but we'll get to that. What are your thoughts on the AL East race? This coming from Cowboy Jeff, of course, super relevant with the Blue Jays coming to town today in Kansas City. So I still think they do have a shot at the division. I, I don't think the Yankees, in my mind, are like this perfectly stacked super team. I think they're good. No? You think I'm off? I think they're good. 
But I, I think the Blue Jays can catch up. You surprised? There's seven I, games I just up. Think There's the a lot of season has been, left. Well, the starting pitching has been the difference for the Yankees and that bullpen as well. Whereas I think in Toronto, when you put the, both of those teams together, where they fault is that pitching, right? Where, where I look at them and I say, well, how can we line up these guys? Well, the pitching has been much better for the Yankees than it has been for the Blue Jays. I think that's an area where the Blue Jays are going to go and, and get better at early on later on in, in the trade deadline but no question about it when we talk about the offense the offense is definitely there they can score runs with the best of them but the Yankees I think for me this is the best Yankees I've seen in a long time they're athletic they can defend up the middle and they can certainly pitch yeah I think I'm just saying for example like the trad green injury relief pitching wise like starting to get a, a few holes I know I'm, yeah. I'm getting picked yeah. I'm no Yankees are good I'm just saying if you told me at the end of the season there is a close race with oh, the Jays it's and be, the Yankees yeah, for the yeah, division, yeah. I would not be surprised at all based on what the starting pitching looks like. Uh, Hall of Fame baseball cards with another. Did Alec Manoa get shades from Doc Brown? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, we're too But they were, they were pretty sweet. Yeah. Pretty sweet shades. I'll tell you that. How, how about how the size of him? When you saw him in the clubhouse, how big he is? He is. Like, man, this guy is a horse. He Absolute is a horse. horse. It, we, we say this sometimes. He is a unit. Oh, he he's a, a unit. Dude. He's a unit. Yeah. I mean, he... he, he gave me a hug he just i pretty much was hiding in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah him right oh yeah he's got that's that right. bulldog attitude that's right that's which right. i respect oh one of our fan curious creators can bobby witt jr become a rookie of the year candidate oh, he's he already, already is he's already a, yeah uh, julio rodriguez strong candidate Pena. jeremy Pena, super yeah, strong three, candidate i think yeah. those three uh they're, they're going to be up there you know when you look at the rookie campaign right now in the American League, those three are up there. Julio Rodriguez is Joe really Ryan doing it. Joe Ryan is doing I mean, it on the pitching side, no question bit, yeah. about that. But Bobby Witt, I, I think if he continues to get uh, opportunities, which he will, I think he's going to be up there in the ones and twos. Yeah. Who do you think? I, I do think Rodriguez wins it, and that was yeah. my pick before the season starts. I just think all-around game, and he's picked it up a little bit quicker. Yeah, but don't sleep on Pena now. He's playing in That's the middle true. infield. That's true. The Houston Astros are playing well. It, it's, it feels like they haven't even missed a beat. Remember, Carlos Correa was there and having a pretty good year, yet there's been no talks. It's been very quiet. Carlos Pena is doing his thing. He's playing really good defense. He's hitting some the long ball. I like what he's bringing. Yeah, you're right. Jeremy Pena, he's playing a really nice shortstop. Yep. He's doing it on both sides. And – Curious creator question from another fan. Will Carlos Santana be dealt at the deadline? So we spent a little bit of time talking about Benintendi with Merrifield. I, I, th I think the answer in my mind is yes, if, if the hitting picks up. If he did what he did today, he'll be the first guy getting a call <laughs> out of here <laughs> and getting a prospect. So, And there's another guy, a really good prospect as a first baseman in Vinny Pascantino. So, look, he's doing his thing at AAA, and he, we understand – the upside this kid is bringing number five first baseman prospect, according to uh, MLB.com. So he, he's waiting in the ranks. He, he's ready to roll. And the defense he brings as well is, is really, really good. And I like what he's done his last couple years in the minor leagues. He's a guy. And if the Royals are going to continue to produce young talent like this, he needs that shot as well. But look, Carlos Santana, he's a veteran presence. He's won before. I think a team will take a shot. Yes, it all makes sense. Team takes a shot. You obviously have to maybe adjust the money situation where the Royals take on some more of the contract, but Pasquantino is ready to go. Yeah, he is. I mean, the OPS is near 1,000, and the season, we're deep into the minor league season already. Next Wednesday, AL Central leaders and a team that many pegged as a playoff ball club this year, the Seattle Mariners. Not there right now, still under the 500 mark, starting to make their climb. It was a slow start for them. Cannot wait for that one. Also, Seattle has some studs in their oh, pitching man. staff. Some young guys like George Kirby yep. and Logan Gilbert. Yep. If we land one of those, we don't know who the pitching I'll be fun. is going to look like yet. But this could be really I, good. You know, there's a guy that's going very underrated. That's Ty France. Mm. Uh, one of the premier hitters in our game right now. He got let go by San Diego. There was no position for him because of Manny Machado and Eric Hosmer. He's in Seattle right now getting at bats. He's a guy that guess what was two or three points away from hitting 400 in triple a yes and he's doing it big time right now hits machine i remember i called the triple a all-star game a few years ago i was like how is this guy still in the minor leagues? oh man like, he can hit going on he can hey, absolutely hit he can absolutely so youtube game of the week back next wednesday emerald city julio rodriguez rookie of the year candidate with the mariners taking on byron buxton and the minnesota twins coverage begins 3 30 eastern time 
That's when our pregame show fires up. Oh, look at Yonder <laughs> crushing that BBQ Tigging. tonight, too. For Yonder, Brett, and the rest of our superstar crew, I'm Scott Braun logging off for now. We'll see you next week in Seattle on YouTube.